G'day folks, Faction Focus, AOS coach here, bringing you Faction Focus, Orc Warclans with two absolute green skin legends. We have on my center, I guess, uh, we have Matt Gammy, a bone splitter extraordinaire, Mango Mafia himself, long time bone splitters player. Uh, I actually found out you recorded the, the first tournament you took in AOS was in 2017, uh, Disciples of Dismay, and you came third with the Bone Splitters. Yep. So there you go. I'll take that. That's the highest I've ever come with Bone Splitters for the last three years, definitely. <laughs> well, it's great to have you on the channel. I know you're a Wanderers player as well, but you are a long term uh, Bone Splitters player. Anything you want to say to the internet as that introduction? Uh, Not just hello to my fellow Mango boys if they are watching. Hopefully they jump online as well. And all those people who are loving the Naked Green boys, I hope you enjoy the show as well. Be a good time. Well, it's good to have you on because I definitely wanted to hear that bone split aside. Lots of talk about Iron Jaws, but we do have our Naked Savage Tribal Orcs, uh, which oh, yeah. uh, you know, and we talked a lot uh, earlier in the chat that um, the combo between the Iron Jaws and the Blown Splitters uh, is being quite popular in tournaments at the moment. So I think uh, between you both, there'll be a nice robust conversation. Uh, for people who have been on this channel before, uh, Brogan, Brogan Clark was on Faction Focus Iron Jaws, so we got him back. Uh, he is a long-term Iron Jaws player. Uh, CanCon, you came 25th out of 200-odd players, uh, which was pretty amazing, and you dropped a whole bunch of knowledge bombs uh, in our last video. So, um, how are you, Brogan? Doing well, man. Doing well. I uh, just knocked off a cheeky shift to work, ready to some more hammer, talk some iron jaws. Working Sundays, M must be paying the bills to buy more uh, orcs or maybe buy the splitters that are going to help your iron jaws go to, to win CanCon, maybe. Man, it never ends. It never ends. Well, it's good to have you both. Uh, to, obviously, the, the topic of discussion is faction focus, uh, orc war clans. Uh, where we're going to talk about the whole breadth of building an army, turning it from good to great, customizing it, making it all sexy, uh, and more importantly, finding out why you guys love the greenskins. Uh, my personal preference is the little wag, which is the goblins, but I'm sure you guys are going to teach me a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So uh, let's start off with Gammy. Um, who are the Orc War Clans? Um, obviously, you've come from the Bone Splitter side, so I'd love to hear your side of like the tribalism and why you're now joining up forces with the Iron Jaws. Sweet man, yeah. Uh, so the old splitters, they've. Um, what I like about them is you've got the idea of this, this, these orcs that are going around the realms, and they're just a bunch of fungal matter that have turned into this like disease that just rampages across the realms and basically you get all the orcs together they're all having a great time and then for some odd reason you either get too much juju power from killing some monsters or maybe you get you know there's a few stories of dudes getting hit on the head by a giant and then they just start seeing visions and stuff like that and it just turns into basically they get sent away by the iron jaws because you've got the you know the big wire sort of thing of iron jaws and all the dudes hanging out uh, and, you know, I think Bone Splitters kind of freak them out a bit too much because they think they're too in touch with the uh, big wire magic, which is wicked. Um, so you send them out as a little nomad sort of thing, and basically you start following the Wurgog Prophet who sees visions and works here, and so just turns into this big, you know, swarm of angry naked guys with war paint that, you know, they believe so badly that they're doing the right thing that it actually bounces off arrows and all that sort of stuff. So... Bone splitters are just cool. They're just a bunch of dudes just running around, having a great time, trying to get the biggest monster, like deadliest catch in the mortal realms. It's, you know, that's what they're about. It's good fun. I love them. Naked, deadliest catch, tattoos, disease. Like what, what, are, what, what's, what's not love to love about the bone splitter right? side? Yeah. It's uh, like cool orc pirates, basically. They're just, you know, having a great time. Disease and tattoos, of course. <laughs> Love it. And Brogan, you're obviously big on your Iron Jaws. So talk to us more about uh, our metal clad, uh, piggy riding, uh, cabbage friended uh, Iron Jaws. Mate, I, everything Gabby just said is super cool. They're green. They love a big fight. But these boys have some armor. Uh, they understand a bit of structure. They've got martial prowess. And they're just hunting for that biggest fight to be the biggest and the bestest. Yeah, love it. Love it. It's absolutely some good love between the two. You've got those hard hitting iron jaws, which are absolute the best of the best essentially. And they, they ride into battle and they're absolute uh, hit as hard as nails. And then you've got the other side, which is that 
naked goodness orcs that are a bit more tribal, a bit more savage. Uh, and I think between the two, when you guys start coming in, uh, you guys are going to absolutely big wag the absolute hell out of tournaments. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Love it. So obviously the, the challenge with building a list or this question that I would normally ask is, what are the strengths of the army? Because when you start looking at the Iron Jaws and you start looking at Bone Splitters, individually they have strengths and weaknesses. But for the first time in a long time, we're bringing them back together and there's now a combination. Um, and under the War Clans, we can start to kind of almost bridge the gaps or potentially uh, avoid some of those weaknesses or, or make those strengths even better. So, uh, Gammy, I'll, I'll start with you again. What are the strengths that you see in this book, whether it's just for the Bone Splitter side or just as a book in general? Yeah, man. Um, so I reckon Bone Splitters, this is one where um, I was having a game yesterday uh, against the master, Dave himself, who was running Oracle War Clans. And we we both, were, we got halfway through the game, we'd forgotten about 20 rules each. And we both just said, there's so much going on now that we we actually said it's like learning a whole new army. And for me, it's um, it's got that core of savages so with bone splitters they're all about numbers they're all about you know weight of dice getting extra attacks doing all that sort of thing it used to be really painful to play against with uh, the old cunning ruck where you would just watch your opponent if you're playing against it you watch them roll dice for half an hour and say okay i've done you know 28 wounds and then most of the time if you had an armor save they maybe get like three wounds through at the end of the day like it was just a bit of a slow game when you're playing bone splitters and they're all about you know, swamping objectives, holding that sort of stuff. Now they definitely can take a hit. That's the biggest thing that I've found with them. Um, you know, they've they've got ways of improving their armor save, their war paints now an after save instead of just the six up, which it used to always be. Um, and you know, it was, it, for them, the speed is is key. I think um, when you look at both the iron jaws and bone splitters together in the big war, uh, speed it's just crazy. That I think your opponents can be really surprised with how quick you get across the table. Uh, how hard you hit, um, particularly with mm -hmm. war chanters and the like, and with bone splitters side of things, I think they've got that weight of dice, but it's actually they've streamlined the whole process now, so that you just have a much quicker sort of sort of turn. Which um, I love, and man, they're they're all about you know swamping the table, and it looks wicked when you've got a hundred plus models on the table, and it's good fun. So what, so what I'm hearing as well is, uh, and, and, and when, as I read through the book, I noticed that it's a little bit different to the Gits book where the Gits, when they combined mm. up the faction, you know, um, they, you had Trogoths, you had your uh, Spider Fang, and then you had your Moon Clan, and they kind of brought it all together under this Git mob, sorry, the Git mob, um, Gloom Spike keyword, and you could build however you wanted to build. But I'm noticing the difference here is you've got three different sets of allegiance. You've got your Bone Splitters still, so you can play pure Bone Splitters, you can play Iron Jaws, so you can play pure Iron Jaws, but then there's this combination kind of umbrella that you keep referring to as uh, the Big Wag, um, which is that combination um, faction. That's correct? Yep, that's it, man. Yeah. And it's it's a really, really cool book because you do have, you know, Bone Splitters itself. I've, I'm writing so many different lists and I'm trying to work out which clan I want to run and you know, if I want to run a clan because the the command traits and artifacts are wicked so it's just there's so much in this book they've actually really thought it through and like you said it's it's not just a um you know a whole umbrella of gloom spite type thing it's not just an umbrella of orcs you've got really which i think is really cool i enjoy it so so games workshops if you're a, a bone splitters player you love your bone splitters and you don't want to not play bone splitters games workshops are not forcing you to buy uh, iron jaws uh, and, and vice versa, if you're an Iron Jaws player, you love your Iron Jaws and you have no interest in getting um, some Bone Splitters, there, there's no forcing to do so. You can play as what, as you want to play with the new book. Uh, but then there's also the benefits of combining if you wanted to explore a, a route that you never had access to before, which is uh, effing exciting. That's really, really oh, cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Brogan, anything you'd want to add to to the strengths of the book? I was just going to say, yeah, it feels like a real celebration of your collection. I know a lot of green skin players, they have, uh, they have both types. Um, a lot of people also have goblins from the old orcs and goblins days as well, but just opening in on what it is to be an orc, everything's in that book, and you can combine it and just get the most out of it and have a lot of fun, which I think is great. It's uh, taking some of that like, exclusivity away and just got everyone involved, no matter what type of big orc you've got. Yeah, yeah, very cool. 
uh, I think, and, and you know, as a uh, a Cities of Sigma player, um, I feel exactly the same. It's a celebration. If I want to use my free people, absolutely use my free people. But all of a sudden, there's this celebration and all this cool lore and these cool abilities that um, you get access to. So, um, absolutely yeah. happy days. It's a great book. It's going to be great to see um, the Iron Jaws, the Bone Splitters back on the table, especially the Bone Splitters, which we probably haven't seen for a long time. I know. Uh, there are a couple of really big champions in the community who play bone splitters, but they've really kind of died off in the last probably two years. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, man, and the stats kind of show it as well. If you see the the amount of people playing bone splitters, I think it was only like 0.8 percent of the meta is is coming through as bone splitters. So I'm I'm really keen to see that improve. Um, and yeah, like you said, some some of those champions kind of return back to them, which will be really the good. Yeah, agreed. You just don't see them um, coming out as often. So so we've talked a bit about the strengths. There's a lot of flexibility. It's a very elite army. Um, you've got a lot of cool combinations, whether your Bone Splitters, uh, Iron Jaws, or your Big Wag. Um, they're a great army to play. They look like a really cool army to paint. Um, they're cost-effective as well. If, correct me if I'm wrong. There's definitely a, a bunch of box sets you can pick up, and um, it's not going to be uh, an army that's going to be too expensive unless – you wanted to go down um, certain particular builds. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. You're spot on there. One hundred percent. What's the weaknesses? What 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 are you going to struggle with, or what are the things you're like? Oh, I can't really play in this particular phase, or it's not really. Uh, you know, there's something that's not quite there for you um, from this book. Brogan, I'll I'll, I'll I'll go with you. Yep. Uh, I think. At first glance, perhaps body count, unless you go to the hard points and things. Um, but yeah, you still have a multi wound uh, type army, and that's always going to be the weakness up front. Um, I'm noticing a lot of things are destroying armor at the moment. And I, as much as the four plus armor save looks amazing, I do think that's a little bit of a catch at the moment. Uh, I've personally felt that um, in recent points, it's just gone through the most like, little paper thin at times. But there, there's different buffs and different ways to play, and you can get the most out of it. Um, I, I'm excited there for the um, uh, bone splitters given that like, taboo save. I think that's really going to be quite durable for them. Uh, so there's definitely yeah. ways to stay tough. Yeah, agreed. And Gammy, anything you'd see from a weakness point of view? Yeah, I think um, you know I'd set the world on fire if I said Slanesh was a weakness for us because um, you know I think everyone's everyone's in the same boat there. <laughs> you know I don't, I don't have a five saying that, but you know, I wrote a uh, big wire list today and it had two hundred and forty five wounds in it, and then I sat back and went, "That's just a lot of depravity for them to just lap up and enjoy and summon twelve, you know, whatever it is they can bring in Keeper of Secrets, any anything they feel like." So yeah. I think. Uh, in all honesty, though, I'd say armor saves have been a big issue for bone splitters in the past in, in the sense that you used to come up against a lot of two-up re-rollable, unrendable, you know, all these sorts of combinations. And um, when I went to Masters a few years ago, I came up against the Vanguard Wing with its two-plus re-rollable save that go into, you know, so I went up against that twice in a row, then I went up against... Zench, who were running, you know, re-rollable saves. Sylvaneth, who were running re-rollable saves. It was just one of those things. I kind of sat there and went, okay, I'll just roll lots of dice for nothing to occur. Um, I'd say speed for us is a great thing, but um, if we come up against resilience, it'll be a tough one. But there are, I think Brogan mentioned it before, there's ways to kind of come like, counter that. But, um, yeah, match-up dependent. I, I think our weakness will be the still that resilient aspect. We want to crush stuff and we want to move through it. We don't want to be, you know, in a war of attrition. I think um, the new death guys might help that, you know, along the way sort of thing with um, their resilience. They seem pretty resilient so far, and that'll be a big big challenge for us. Yeah, and obviously as the meta kind of uh, changes and moves along and we might see more shooting and, you know, the prevalence of Slanesh's uh, fighting last may change or, you know, we don't know what the new death's going to do or any particular books that are coming out in the future, but knowing here you've got an elite force, um, you don't have the bodies, um, the, the cheap chaff that uh, is available to, to particular armies you don't have. Um, mm. I don't know if you can ally gr Grotz in or anything, but um, but the, just generally within the army. Yeah. We can go to the little guys, which um, uh, the, the game I played yesterday, we were joking around saying that because there was uh, Dave was running a, a shaman, a little shaman guy, and I, I said, uh, you know, we probably chucked him in a burlap sack and brought him to the battlefield, chucked him out, said, you know, start casting 
collecting some moons, do some spiders. They, I think you're right though. The cheap bodies doesn't exist. You think it would, um, but you know, even running a unit of ten savages is 120 points. I mean, you start to see the benefit there. They used to be 100 points a long time ago. Um, but yeah, chaff walls and that sort of stuff. It's definitely harder to move through with that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Broke anything else you'd add? No, I just completely agree with that. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do struggle with the bodies. Um, uh, so there is the path with, with the other bodies, and obviously with the bone splitters as well. But yeah, it's not the cheapest option to get those bodies on the table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Broken, do you have a mic in your laptop at all? Uh, yeah, I do. You want me to switch out for it? Yeah, just give it a shot. You're a bit breaky up here. Um, see if that improves. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll keep talking to Gammy uh, while you try that. Um, so fair enough. Uh, we'll keep going. Uh, appreciate Brogan uh, fixing up his mic because I know he's got a lot of knowledge to share on this. So we know the strengths of the, the book. We know the, the weaknesses, especially bodies, um, a lot of expensive bodies as well. You probably don't have that cheap chaff that's available. Um, you didn't get a terrain piece. You didn't get any special endless spells. So I guess that kind of alludes into later. Um, yeah, so, it's, um, yeah, it was one of those, I think there's a lot of negativity about the uh, lack of terrain pieces and stuff like that. But I think the, um, I, I said yes, uh, to, or I said it all week, basically. I think we've actually secretly got our terrain piece via Forge World with our Rogue Idol, which I'll talk about later. But I think, um, you know, that it was like Forge World, we're kind of like, oh, let's give him this big piece here that can, you know, moving terrain piece. It, it kind of works. I like it. To be fair, I've been lugging around a, a loon shrine for the last 12 months, and I'm so happy not to be bringing around a terrain piece because uh, that that sucker is massive and it takes up a yeah, big man. piece, and that goes to my my, my toys. So, um, yeah. So that's um that's the benefits. So we're gonna start building a list, and obviously there's benefits in going in allegiance, either iron jaws, bone splitters, or into the big wag versus a mixed destruction um theme. So what do I get? Uh, we'll see if Brogan can can talk first. Well, hopefully his mic's fixed up by now. But what's the benefits of going uh, allegiance, either Iron Jaws, Bone Splitters, or Big Wag? Choose which one you want to do first. Uh, happy to talk some Iron Jaws if you can hear me. Yeah, sounds good. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, look, the Legion's ability, uh, abilities are called uh, Brutality Incarnate. So there's our number one reason to take that. It's sick. On top of that, uh, we've got uh, Eagle for Battle. So just as a, a passive ability for the entire Iron Jaws army, you've got on the charge, uh, which is um, incredible. I mean, no times that's got me out of jail. I mean, you roll those snake eyes and you're still in there if you're close enough. You know? So I think that's a fantastic ability to start with. Um, on top of that, we've uh, now got a new uh, passive ability as well, where every phase where you take damage, uh, you get to move D6 inches towards your enemy, which is amazing. Uh, that's any phase. Like you, you take some damage from the brain, move forward. You take uh, damage from the enemy, move forward. You green puke on yourself, move forward. Like <laughs> it's incredibly uh, hard in the end. It makes you your slower looking army so much faster. Yeah. So you've got a couple of, so you've got the allegiance of Iron Jaws, you've got the allegiance of Bone Splitters, and you've got the allegiance of Big Wag. So um, that's some some pretty cool Iron Jaws one. So you've got that eager for battle, mad as hell, uh, smashing and bashing, and then you got some special command abilities. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, smashing and bashing is uh, pretty much the same uh, as it was from um, last general's handbook. So essentially, uh, if you you don't have an enemy unit with twelve inches, uh, you're looking at free movement, uh, which is excellent because any buffs you've got on top of that can for it. Uh, you, if you're within twelve inches of the enemy, you can declare a charge. And if you win in three inches of an enemy, you can pile in a strike um, in your hero phase, which is just giving you um, some kind of punch and just uh, some activation wars abilities, which is really nice to have. Especially if you're fighting Slime Ash, it's a good way to sleep on top of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, going out, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. And Gammy, what about uh, Bone Splitters? Yeah, so Bone Split has got some cool little buffs. I um I'm currently in a lot of arguments with the Brizhammer boys at the moment as to who were the actual winners of the book. We keep having uh big arguments about it. I've had to refer to Dave and Dino as Big Wah from now on because because uh, they beat me. I was trying to say Bone Splitters were the winners, and 
I actually genuinely think they, they came out of this book on top, which is, you know, and I'll talk a bit more about that, which is basically they've got tireless trackers. Um, this is the it's a game changer. When you've got a five-inch inning of the game, um, you know, you're able to sit there and reposition or move closer because, you know, you, you don't know who's – I think it kind of puts the uh, onus on the, your opponent, if the, particularly if they've lost their um, – or if they dropped first, then they, they might sit there and say, well, I've got to make the call now as to who, you know, takes the first turn and Tyler's trackers puts you in that position to kind of be on the forward step. Or you might say, well, actually, if I'm playing something like Feck or uh, Slanesh or something where they, they want to push forward, you can reposition there. So Tyler's trackers is a big game changer for me. Um, the other thing that I really like about them is the monster chart where you can actually pick now instead of doing random dice roll. They kind of cleaned up a lot of the use that used to be random. I used to quite like it in a uh, random sense with bone splitters. It makes sense that they're random, but uh, they have tightened a lot of things up. They kind of did their own pre-FAQ FAQ with the allegiance abilities, which was if you stack an ability uh, that explain that you stack this ability with the generating extra attacks. I um, mean, they kind of clear that one up, which I really liked because I think that was one where people could kind of try and abuse it a bit. And they kind of did their preemptive FAQ and said, actually, this is how it works. Don't, you know, play it how you think it's going to play, which I thought was really clever. And they also got access to the WAG ability, which they never had. So, um, which, you know, once per game, you can get an extra attack on all units within 18. And it's a really nice buff there if you've got a CP to spend. And yeah, I think that's nice. a really nice, nice bonus there. So, yeah, they got some... Really, really nice buffs to the bone splitters. I'm, I'm very excited to run them. And their war paint obviously is a big change as well. I, I like it as a DPR save. It's um, you know, that was what they used to have in their original war scroll was the six up after save, and now they've actually got access to it. And I think that's a, a massive win, massive win from my side of things. And what's probably really cool as I'm looking through the book, you've also got you know not just an allegiance of iron jaws or bone splitters. You then got these sub allegiances where you got you know different you know dragon foot for example is um, one that a lot of people are speaking about. Um, and we'll get to those sub allegiances, but much like your daughters that came have got temples, you've got your um, stormcast to have chambers. You've got these additional layers of um, of goodness that are going to come from your iron jaws or your bone splitter um, choices. So. Uh, yeah, there's cool. a lot of lot of layers to it. It's a it's a deep dive book. I think it's um, surface level. Uh, it might not look like a lot when you kind of sit there and say, "Well, I think models wise, a lot of people kind of underestimate bone splitters and iron jaws." Um, but they've started to realise that there's a lot going on in this book, and and the three allegiance abilities you get is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, you've got your big wag, which is that combination of um, of your uh, bone splitters and your iron jaws. Um, Jamie, talk to me about that. Yeah, man. So the big wag, it's a, um, like you said, combination of bone splitters and iron jaws. And basically what you start to do is it's a, it's a tech actually, and it's one that um, uh, uh, on paper, I didn't really see the benefit of running a big wag. Um, I kind of sat there and said, oh, it's cool. I like the idea for those people that want to run, you know, iron jaws and bone splitters together. But once you play a game against them, you see the building up of this idea of it's called war energy where they, they build it up based on um, different things in the game. So if you run certain characters, you generate some in the hero phase. If you have certain units in range of combat, if you make charges with units of 10 or more models, it gets to a point where you start leveling up. And so basically um, what they've actually done with the big wag is by the time you build up, I think it's around about... 16 points or when you yeah when you get to 12 points actually that's where you start to see that you actually have the um bone splitters allegiance abilities built in so those people who if you start to see they'll build a lot of iron jaws as their core for the big wag ability and then they start to get those benefits of actually running bone splitters as well which is a really clever sort of thing to do so uh the big advantage i see from it is that you Basically, across the table, you're getting add one to hit and wound rolls by the time you get up to 24, and then you just get the big wag command ability at 24. And the best part is when you burn that 24 points, you roll a dice, and on a one, all your points disappear. On a, I think it's anything two to five is half the points disappear. And then on a six, you keep all 24 points, so you can just do it again, and you keep all your buffs. So it's a... Um, in, on paper, I didn't really see the benefit, but in, in the game, I kind of sat there going, oh, okay, this is building up, and it's 
really cleverly done, really, really fluffy, sticks to the to the background of what they're meant to be. And that's what so I like. you're accumulating these, like I'm reading it now, and it says, you know, you, yep. you generate wag points by having, um, you know, uh, if your general's on the battlefield, you generate command points, you've got Gordrak, you generate command points. Um, at the start of hero phase, you've got a, a war channel on the battlefield, you get them from having the prophet or the war doc, you're going to get them for having friendly orcs in the charge. There's so many different... Um, so many different benefits that you know throughout the game as you've got things it's almost like uh if you've ever played nurgle before and you got like you yeah. know a terrain piece and you got you know uh, bodies in your territory and their territory you get different points and then you get to use them um yeah man and it's um and i find nurgle's a bit more situational so it was one where initially when it came out it was super strong um their ability to build up these these summoning points but this is um because i actually thought it would be like a summoning mechanic a lot of people kind of guessed with the big wag battle traits that you get that summoning towards the end but i i it's amazing you don't end up getting that at all it's crazy you just have all the extra stuff going on and then you still have access to the the artifacts of power and the spells the mount traits the war chanter war beats you know you're basically getting to pick and choose from the whole thing it's pretty cool it's bloody crazy. So I guess I guess the question I've got for you while Paul Brogan sorts out his technology is, um, yeah, <laughs> how do you how do you choose which one to go down? How do you choose between going down Iron Jaws, Bone Splitters, or Big Wark? Like, what's the how, how do you make sense of it all? Yeah, man. Um, I actually, uh, it's one that I kind of. It's a really good question. I think it comes down to the type of uh, player you want to be. Um, I, I think if you're a purist in the sense then you'd run iron jaws or you'd run bone splitters um for myself i'm uh you know i've been mad about bone splitters for a, since eighth edition fantasy as soon as that plastic mm -hmm. kit came out I, I wanted to build a savage orc army so for me you know the dream's always to be running bone splitters and i definitely intend on doing that but in saying that i've also i'm really excited to build some iron jaws stuff up so i'm, I'm keen to get you know the brutes and, and get a more crusher get all the cool stuff and then build that big wag because i think the big wag is if we're talking competitive wise i would say it's definitely got more of a um a hand to play in the in the top tables when you get up there i, I think it'll with the big wag points um people will not know how to to counter that because the, the great thing about it is the iron jaws their um uh battalions uh, they're fantastic. I, as soon as I started reading them, I thought you can't really go past the Iron Jaws Battalions, whereas Bone Splitters, you can go past them. I, I think there's two standouts, which is Cunning Ruck and Teeth Ruck, and a lot of you know, Bone Splitters players out there talk about that. Um, but, you know, overall, when you're getting the Iron Jaws Battalion abilities in a big wag, it's crazy what you can do. It, it, there's some combos there that are, are fantastic. So, um, if you, you know, it, as I said, it depends on which player you want to be. Um, I would say competitive wise, you can make all three work. Um, Purists, then you, you kind of stick to the other two and, and go with iron jaws or bone splitters. So if I want to go, if I if I like my bone splitter keyword and I love these units that are sitting with under bone splitters, I'm going to choose bone splitter allegiance. If I'm yeah. I like my iron jaws models and I like the iron jaws allegiance, I'm picking that. Uh, yeah. And then if I want a bit of a both or I want a bit of a mixture and I don't want to use an ally pool to do so, then I'm going the big wag is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Pretty much, man. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Brogan, how are we going, buddy? buddy? I feel like I've caught up on all of that. Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you, yeah. I can't see your lovely face, though. It's I'm crazy. so sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you had to uh, sacrifice his beautiful face and, and uh, for, for audio quality. So Yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I did my war paint just nice for you, Gammy, as well, bro. Oh, man, so man. disappointing. Oh, dude. <laughs> you can send me pics later. We'll, we'll work it out. <laughs> oh, I will do. And <laughs> <On> Snapchat. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. All right. I'm going to move you guys forward. And I think the best way to handle this book, and, and I'd love you guys to, to help me with this, is I think we could go down a rabbit hole really easily by looking at the allegiances and the sub-allegiances and okay. getting really confused. I think... The best way to start looking at this, especially as, at a fundamental level, is by looking at the units and starting to think about what are the units that I want um, and, and then starting to look at how to then optimize it a bit later. Otherwise, I think it's very easy to get lost in this book, especially if I'm early on in my collection. Is that a fair assumption? 
Yeah, yeah 100 percent man. You're right. Yeah. Cool. So there's usually two ways we start building a list, and that would either be at a hero level or with battle line. Which one do you think would uh, be the strongest brogan for us to start with? Is it heroes to? Uh, honestly, I I go with battle line, but uh, that's pretty easy with the Iron Jaws army because almost everything is battle line. All right. Well, let's let's talk battle line then. Let's choose. Let's start with our battle line choices. And again, um, we've got our generic battle line, which is our Savage Oryx. Um, are they our only battle li generic battle line? Uh, yes, so they're, they're our generic battle line. Um, and yes, then if you go are. with, yep. yeah, so so um, we've got generic battle line as a Savage Oryx, and then um, we've got some additional ones if we choose uh, a particular note. So it might be uh, the uh, Ard Boys are battle line uh, with Iron Jaws or Big Wag. Um, you've got your battle line Iron Jaws for your Brutes. So you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of battle line, but there's an assumption that you either choose Bone Splitters Iron Jaws or Big Wag. That's right. Yeah. Cool. So let's talk battle line. What's your hot take, Brogan? What's your first one and why is it a good choice? Uh, always Brutes. I will never change. <laughs> so we're talking yes. about Oryx Brutes? Uh, yeah. Oryx Brutes. Gotta love them, mate. <laughs> yeah. Man, so their, battle know, line, but... their battle line only with Iron Jaws or Big Wag. <laughs> That's correct. Um, look, I, honestly, I love the Brutes and you are detecting so much bias with this one. Uh, and I think it bled through uh, in the last show as well. Uh, to do a switch up on you though, uh, I have to say the uh, best looking unit is probably the Ard Boys. Um, they uh, hit almost as hard. Uh, their body count can easily get uh, much more superior to the Brutes. Uh, and so the durability is right there as well. Uh, they're going to hit like a freight train. All the all the same buffs can go onto them as well. And you're going to have that really nice um, thing of board control, which uh, which is Brutes, uh, your Grunters, and other units just kind of see as well. I'm talking from an Iron Jaws perspective. So we're going down Ard Boys and Brutes as our battle line choices generally? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And... Are we thinking, so you, you've got your minimum choices of five and they go up to either 30 for Ard Boys or 20 for Brutes. Um, yeah. What's that combination look like? Do you go large units, small units? Do you go uh, two and one or one and two? How do you how do you build that list with the I, the, the Brutes and the, the, the Ard Boys? Yeah, look, uh, honestly, I prefer a bit of a mix of things. I've been playing an MSU style army, mostly Brutes. Um, for about a year now and I've had uh, mixed success with it. Um, this time around, due to some other buffs that you'll find in the book, um, uh, which we'll definitely touch on later, I'm starting to see some benefits in having uh, large units, uh, large units of ten brutes uh, are going to be fantastic when you start stacking extra damage on them, pluses to hit, pluses to wound. Um, so I think definitely having a bit of a combination just for a bit of uh, uh, just play space on the board. Um, doing everything that an MSU army does well and having that extra um, punch from all the buffs and durability of a large unit, I think the strength is really a mix rather than just sticking to one style. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the interesting one is that you can have a bit of a mix. Uh, there's pros and cons uh, by going down that route, but uh, it sounds like Broken is a massive fan of the Ard Boys and the Brutes. Right. But uh, actually, to tell you the truth, more recently, I'm getting my arms twisted heavily towards uh, the Gore Grunters. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you didn't say uh, Gore Grunters. Uh, I've just had <laughs> I, I just had PSD uh, with with the Gore Grunters. Uh, I just played a, an army. I was playing a gammy that I just played a game against eighteen piggies uh, with Ooh. a more crusher. Uh, a couple of war chanters and a boss, Oof. and it hit like a truck in in turn one. Yep, it's going to do that. Um, yeah, look, I had a very recent experience where I went, oh, look, there's some high damage on the piggies, especially if you uh, get the charge and you arm them with the spears. Um, and, yeah, you're looking at a two up to hit, two up to wound. You can stack extra damage, which is something we'll explain later with the war chanter. Um, just for a train capability um, and if you get free movement on them uh, you're almost looking at that guaranteed turn one charge and they just pulverize things yeah you're very much definitely going down at an elite army where you've got only a few models um, yeah. 
that that uh, that piggy build definitely has a lot of wounds in it. So Slanish absolutely loves you, uh, and you're really setting up for that uh, first turn charge. That's right. Cool. And um, all right, that's an interesting. That, that's your battle line choices if you're thinking about it from a nine jaws perspective. Um, yeah, that's right. And look, honestly, to sound as torn as I have sound in this review, it's because I honestly am all three options. I think are very solid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would say, regardless if you went Ard Boys, Brutes, or Gore Grunters, you uh, you have good choices. Um, uh, I don't know if I would say go down the whole Gore Grunter, Grunter route. You you you're sacrificing bodies, um, uh, and you, you potentially have uh, you know these elite units holding objectives and just sitting there idle. But uh, I think which, whichever way you build, those are three really great battle line choices. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think there's the potential for uh, very early tabling of the opponent and you won't be sitting idle at all because the game will be over if you stack pigs and you stack them right. But uh, that's I, not I, always going to can, happen. I conceded uh, at the top of turn two uh, yeah. my game. So I lost priority, um, yeah. basically got smashed, uh, and it's now forced me to go get 30 Phoenix guards. So uh, thank <laughs> you to Ben. Thank you, Ben, for uh, for making me realize that I need Phoenix guard. Uh, sorry, free guild, but uh, yeah, they do hurt a lot. Uh, yeah. I think if you can't handle, if someone hits you harder, like a, like a Slanish, for example, um, yeah. uh, or another army, um, you may not have the bodies to support. But they're, they're three good choices. Yeah, exactly right. I, my most recent game against Corn, uh, it didn't go much past uh, two rounds, um, and that was only with a unit of six. I just backed up well by some bricks in the crusher, and yeah, the damage potential is crazy. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be interesting against like a fire slayers or a phoenix guard type army where they can probably absorb a bit more. Yeah. Um, Gabby, what, what are your thoughts on battle line for iron jaws? Well, talk bone splitters Generic, or talk big wag. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. Yeah, man, I um, I, I love the brutes. The brutes for me are a standout. Um, I actually tried to fit 10 into my because their points went down as well so i tried to fit 10 into my um bone splitters army mainly for because i've got a war chance allied in for my um rogue idol at the moment so i was trying to work out how i could get another unit to buff up because as brogan mentioned man when they they hit hard when they are double damage they really because it, it, it doubles their damage essentially and that's something where you know you, you're just sitting there going okay i've got something way more reliable um odd boys are great in units of 10 um you asked that question before about units of five is it worth making them units of 10 i think they are um mainly for if you are looking at big wag ability you'll see that um to build up points you've got to have units of 10 or more making a successful charge to get an extra point so i think you know if you're thinking down that route definitely do that um from a bone splitters perspective i'm same deal i've got so many units that are uh, battle line um i would say my favorite has always been maniac board boys they've they've always been my my um go-to unit and i they've just gotten better um the the amount of attacks they dish out is crazy when there's units of 10 of them for 280 points so same same cost as 10 brutes and that's where i'm kind of looking at that that trade-off um yeah you know they're they're fantastic they get five attacks each on with the guys on top and then two's with the boars as well. So it's seven attacks per model. So you're looking at 70 from a unit of 10 being dished out. Um, you know, it's a, so, and their movement, they improved, they, they got 12 inch move now instead of nine. Um, so already, if you're thinking, you know, objective grabbers, that sort of stuff, I definitely think you can't go past ball boys. Um, Arrow boys also fall under our battle line, but I would say the winners of the book for me for Bone Splitters perspective is definitely the basic savages. Um, it's actually what I'm currently trying to chip away at at the moment is a few sticker boys. So I've got 30 of them I've got to get finished up for next week, but um, they're basically the winners for me because they've they got extra attacks per model. Um, they have two each on their base, whereas when they, and if they have 15 or more models, they go to three attacks each. So if you're looking at a unit of stickers, so 30 boys, if you go 15 wide at two ranks, that's, you know, you've, you've got 90 attacks going in against a unit there, um, which you can buff up and give extra attacks to as well. So for me, battle line wise, um, definitely you're looking at a big block of 30 guys because you can get them to a three ups. So you have a mystic shield. So they, um, and you get the mass kind of become the as well. Berserkers. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So 300 points for 60 wounds. Um, 
you know, put them on an objective with a couple of heroes sitting behind them, they are not going anywhere. And I, that's what I said earlier in the in the broadcast was that we can finally take a hit. Um, it was one thing I used to watch was we were kind of like the, I used to say we were kind of like a, you know, paper cut in a, in a rainstorm sort of thing. You just, you try and throw as all you could, but by the time you got there, you were too wet and you just kind of fell apart and didn't do anything. So yeah, for me, I'd say definitely the boys on foot. So these little guys here, definitely the winners for me would you just take one unit of 30 or or, or uh and, and, I, and i say this because you do have a lot of love you've got your more boys at a battle line you've got arrow boys at a battle line you've got your boar boys which are battle line um and you've got your ma uh, maniacs that you just said as well under the bone splitter allegiance so you got a lot of choice for battle line um I thought Gammy was just thinking. I think he's frozen up. This is uh, this is going yeah. really well. This is going great. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> mate! I'd like to talk splitters. Not my jam just yet, mate. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going off. Um, so, Brogan, any? Do you have any thoughts or any advice around the bone splitter side, or are you not not? Quite yeah, look. I'm still really fresh with them. Um, I, I like the addition of the spear unit. Um, just tactics-wise, I think there's a bit more utility with that. I think before it was just the more boys, and they had the same sort of armament. Um, so it's nice to see a bit of change there. Kind of uh, gives me like these throwbacks to, to fantasy as well. Just looking at them, they actually look like the proper fantasy army, which I really dig. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah um, cool. So go, bro. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, like, tactics-wise, um, I just think the real strength of them is the bodies and the wound count. Um, having played them in the past, it's just a lot of bodies to shift. And the fact that they've got that uh, war paint set on top of that, uh, that can just be incredible when you've got the, the type of wound count that they can get. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, someone in the chat's made a really good point, is that used to be just a, a glass noodle. Uh, they were yeah. just they, – they, they couldn't take a punch. Um so uh, well, well played. Uh, I think, you know, regardless if you go the Arrow Boys, you go the Savage Oryx, uh, or even you want to go down a, um, a, a piggy route uh, or more of a cavalry route, um, you've got some good choices, depending on, I guess, and as we go down the line, you've got your battalions, you've got um, yeah. a whole range of things that you know, might, might come into consideration. Something that I was just going to firm up with before with the other boys is the battle line choice. I think you're definitely looking at the 10 plus. I just had that for the root of it. For uh, Big Wa, and I think it also applies to Iron Doors when you read it. And they need to be 10 plus to get battle lines. I think that's what they're at. Yeah, yeah. Gammy, are we back? Yeah, man. Am I back? Am I alive? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah you're okay, good. sweet. All right. Sorry. It's the uh, Queensland internet. We haven't quite worked out what to do yet. And I think um, yeah, my. My oil farm just fell apart. I've got to go sort that out later on. Yeah. <laughs> Dear God. Um, cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just defending all Queensland. That's my apologies. That's all right. You I love you guys. You guys are the best. <laughs> Any final thoughts on your battle line choices, Gammy? Uh, I think the question you were going to ask me on the way out before I disconnected was, would you take more than one unit? And I'm sure Brogan answered it perfectly. But uh, I think a nice balance of Arab boys and... and um, regular boys is the way to go for battle line and pigs as well i think pigs are I, my battle line i run i run one unit of all three so i've got a big block of 30 big block of 30 and any unit of 10 pigs and that's kind of the battle line that i go with so i found that quite useful now i know um you mentioned in the uh, just before we went live that some of the more competitive builds happening in tournaments so far is in the big wag as opposed to mm -hmm. the iron jaws or the um, the bone splitter out. Yep. If I was building a big wag list, we, I mean, I'm going to have the option of going savage oryx. I'm going to be having my uh, ard boys. I'm going to have my brutes. I'm going to have my gore grunters, and I'm going to have boar boys, arrow boys as my battle line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be. Um, you're looking at Ard Boys for your battle line, um, probably a unit of 30 Arrow Boys as well, just to have as a shooting option. Um, particularly, you know, we were talking about Slanesh before and saying a unit of 30 Arrow Boys is still 90 shots being dished out, so you can still do a fair bit with it. Um, but if you're looking at a big wag, I would say that Ard Boys and Brutes are kind of where you go to. I, I, I'd love to see it, but... Oh, yeah. did you? Oh, no. If we yeah. break up again, we might just reschedule, I think. Yeah, if it's, is it, am I back? 
Hello? Yeah, you good. You're still good. All right, cool. Yeah, we um, go. Yeah, so that that's the way that I'd go is to just kind of mix it up a bit with, with that one. No pigs, though, in a big wag. Is that because of the, um, the, the body count? Yeah, yeah. I think body count and you, your points aren't just going to rack up with, with units of five or units of three. So I think that's the thinking behind that one. Yeah. And Brogan, any thoughts on the big wag build? Uh, look, I just have to agree with Emmy on that one. It's actually something I haven't studied a lot on, but it, it sounds like really sick advice to me. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, sounds good. So I think it sounds like Brogan is definitely going down the Iron Jaws. He's an elitist, doesn't want to change uh, <laughs> his, his mind. Like, don't, no, no, no changing of mind. He is Iron Jaws through and through. Gammy's a bone splitter, but he's happy yeah. to have the... Uh, He's more yeah. inclusive in Queensland. He's like, bit of, come bit in, of come, armor support. That's it. Come <laughs> into my tribe. We, we, we yeah. need someone at the front line to uh, soak it. up the damage while we pew pew. Yeah. While we just go running forward like psychopaths, just chanting. It's good. No, that's great. Works um, I'm very stubborn on this one. Sorry, boys. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, so, all right, so we've got some good battle line choices. Sounds like there's not a lot of bad choices from this particular book. Uh, it depends on the type of build, the type of army you want. And uh, as we go into um, further discussions around um, uh, your, your battalions or potentially those sub-allegiances, um, some of those lists might come out stronger than others. Mm -hmm. That's right. What about our hero choices? So we've got a couple of cool hero choices. You've got your um, your weird knob, your, your, your maniac weird knob. You've got your mega boss, your war chanter, your weird knob shaman. You have a uh, savage big boss. You've got a war doc. You've got your prophet. You then have your Gordrak and your mega boss. Uh, I think they are all your leader choices. Uh, I'll start with you, Gammy. What's your first yep. choice? What do you like and why do you like that leader choice? Yeah, man, uh, my go-to for probably both, uh, or actually all three allegiances, because I think even allying in a Wurgog Prophet is a is a good call. Um, yeah. Two-cast Wizard, two-cast Dispel. Uh, you've got a four-up, he gets a CP. He's um, neg one to hit automatically in, in combat and neg one to hit with shooting if he's near a block of dudes because of the um, lookout, sir. Uh, he's got seven wounds now, so he used to have six. He's got seven wounds. Uh, he is a big winner for me in this book. Um, he's he's just your go-to. And he got more expensive, 20 points more, but I think he's definitely, he's probably worth about 100 points more than what he used to be. So um, he, in my mind, that's the go-to for me. You don't leave home without one, pretty much. There you go. So just, just to reconfirm, Gammy, what aren't we taking, what aren't we leaving home without? A Wurgog Prophet. So those bad boys are the jazz i'm trying to be pg about it but i got very excited for a second there yeah. that's all right uh, would you only yeah. take one yeah man yep i think one's kind of the go-to I, I think going multiple uh you've definitely got more options in war chances or war docs in going multiple with those ones so yep i totally agree with it with the work of broken yeah, the Wurgle Crawford, mate, even in my own Jaws list, I was very tempted to take him. Um, for anyone that was a fan of putting in the Fungoid Cave Shaman to like to really crank up mm -hmm. those uh, command points in the main, I mean, you have to, you know, you've got a big bad orc on the table with two casts a turn. Uh, why wouldn't you? It's fantastic. Yeah, exactly, man. Uh, Brogan, what, what, what's the other choice from yourself? Um... Look, everyone's really impressed at the moment with the Mega Boss and War Crusher, and I am. Uh, I, I would say auto include, but on top of that, uh, my favourite's actually the Auric War Chanter. Whew. Oh, baby, that War Chanter. Yeah. Why? This, Why? Uh, look, look, they're so tasty. Okay, look, they've they've gone up a little bit in points, but don't even worry about that. Um, what you're looking <laughs> for with these boys is their uh, their Violent Fury, mate. It's uh, pick a unit, uh, wholly within 15 inches, and add one damage to the weapon profile and another weapon profile. That's a big deal. People don't even understand it until you make them roll armor saves, fail those saves, and then they're like, oh, I've just taken a million damage. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. yeah. That's rough. 
Yeah, well, what, what you're looking up with this sort of ability here is just a shift in culture for the Iron Jaws. They've gone from really trying to stack those wilds in the previous edition to just roll bulk dice for bulk damage, to having still a decent amount of attacks, but once those go through, that's when you see the bulk damage. And they can do it every single turn because it's applicable in your turn and your opponent's turn, and that buff doesn't go away. It stays until your next hero phase. So if you get doubled, it's still there for you. Awesome. It's powerful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and this is where um, you notice that with this particular book, the combinations are really important. And, um, you know, Gammy talked about, you know, the the, the humble Savage Oric. Yeah. You start adding these buffs and they become supercharged and they become much better. And obviously this is something that's across all books, but, you know, you really do feel it in the, the Orc builds uh, that um, – you know, you look even the old cunning rock, you know, you take a battalion, you supercharge that with one or two characters and holy shite, uh, it is yeah. absolute uh, damage dealing, uh, wheeling and dealing. It is a killing machine. So yeah. um, you can uh, you can customize them to uh, for the benefit of the entire force as well. Um, you can play a unique war beats uh, on top of that damage war beat. Uh, so, for example, you can choose a get more beat and then a four plus. Uh, pick an Iron Jaws unit within whole, uh, sorry, wholly within 12 inches of the, the war tenor, and then you can send them on an 18-inch charge if you want, uh, rolling 3d6 for it. And, and, hey, I mean, I failed at the command point and have a go again from 18 inches away. Yeah, so that that's actually what happened against me the other day where uh, I, played, I played 18 piggies with uh, with a Moor Crusher, two War Chanters, and a Savage, uh, sorry, a Boss on Foot. And um, I stupidly dropped an Everblaze Comet, uh, which gave them a free free movement. So they got moved up the board. Uh, and even though I deployed on my five-inch line, I, I deployed as far away as possible. Uh, that 3D6 charge uh, just, just came in, you know, had a shooting attack, um, you know, got to, got to then, then when I lost the priority and he got to attack in the hero phase. It's just like this, this, this more crush was absolutely going to town. And my poor, poor battle line five uh, plus armor save was not handling him very well. No, it wouldn't. It's huge. I mean, on average, your army's going to be round one as well. So it's just going to make in speed of any army you've got. Um, I think there's so much more versatility in it as well from my game turn two onwards. I mean, you're so much closer to the enemy now. If you're looking at um, a normal charge, which is under 12 inches, you can still declare this, um, and you then roll in 3D6 on top of that, and then look at any buffs, look at any rerolls, and it's, you're just going to get those charges. Yeah, I'm really scared about some of those scenarios that you have uh, only an 18-inch gap. Um, yeah. so, so, you know, and then the fact that the more Crusher also flies, um, you can jump over and you can take take on some of those tasty treats, especially with that 3D6 charge. So. That's right. uh, That's right. Um, just to just to expand a little further on the the war chanter beats, there's the the fixing beat as well. So you can um you can heal units up to d uh, d three wounds, which is quite nice. Um, and then the the third option that you've got there is just a, another one on a four up. Uh, pick a unit within twelve inches, and then just add plus one hit for an entire unit. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, it's it, the iron shows are crazy. You just start getting hitting on twos everywhere. Um, you know, one of my mates said the other day, they said oh, the age of destruction hitting on fours is is starting to disappear. Uh, it's not true. Bone splitters still hit on fours with everything. So I'm sitting here just doing the average dice roll. But um, yeah, man, it's it, getting those buffs. The war chances are really nice, and that's it's interesting because the war docks. So on the bone splitter side, you you basically have these cool little dancing guys who achieve the same thing as what the um the uh what do you call them the war chanters sorry in, in iron jaws do so you've got those buffs you got some extras you can do i've got access to the spell law which i uh, bone splitters spell law is fantastic which i'm sure we'll talk about later but um yeah they're it's kind of a wizard heavy army mm. and so like if you're looking at building that in, in a big wag i think you're going with the war chanters and a and a um, big boy on cabbage if that's what you're looking at and then probably a work profit as well that's probably the build i'd go with there yeah. yeah um i know i know gordrak's been a bit of a joke for some people for some time now um 
but I, I'm seeing people as, uh, are reconsidering Gordrak, and he's, he's not as bad as he used to be. Uh, I think his point had ju- his points adjusted uh, with the new book as well, but he's got a whole ra- range of different benefits. Um, is he now worth reconsidering, in your opinion, uh, Brogan or Gammy? Uh, Brogan, I'll go to you as the Iron Jaws guy first. Uh, I still find it tough. Like he's uh, what he's gone up in in wounds. He's sixteen wounds. He's twenty points cheaper. Uh, he hits like a freight train. He's got good buffs to the rest of the army, but he's still five hundred and forty points. That's a big commitment for sixteen wounds. He does get the guaranteed six points from the D six if you have him under the big wag. Um, so yeah. it could be a worthwhile investment if you're going down big wag versus iron jaws. I would look for it for a big wire investment. If you're really looking to cash in and, and run up those points, then I'm looking at it. So I'm hearing is if I'm going Iron Jaws, maybe the more crusher, uh, as or the mega boss or more crusher, uh, and Gordrak may be a bit better suited for the for the um the big wag, but obviously uh, they're not exclusive. You, you know, you could still put them in either side. Uh, that's yeah. Look, that's where I put my money. Uh, Gammy, your thoughts, mate? What do you think? Yeah, man. I, see, I actually wrote a when I went on um, uh, Doom and Darkness a few weeks ago. I actually wrote a um, big wag army with Godrak. But after seeing the big wag in action, I don't think you're going to see him. I think the more crusher, just basic dude on more crushers, kind of you go to. You get some yeah. more points there to play around with. Um, I. I Love Godrak for his rules. I think he did get improved in some aspects, um, but really he's not not really a go-to. It's kind of like that weird um, argument of Arkin or or uh, Nagash, which one do you take? I think it's kind of the same sort of deal. Is you, Do you go with the big guy more crush or do you just go with a smaller version of him where you can buff him up a bit more sort of thing? But, I mean, I, I, I you rarely see Godrak in action as well, so it'd be really cool to see what he's like in this new book. I think... Um, if someone's brave enough to run him, then I'd really be keen to see it. Actually, yeah. we'll see. We'll see how Ash McEwen goes if he picks up his Iron Jaws. I know he was a big advocate for the Godrak, but you know, I, I think you know, summarizing the chat, it it'd be good to get getting to pick it up again. But you know, when you look at mm. right now, the points are an eighty point difference between the Mega Boss and More Crusher versus Godrak, and the fact that you can customize your uh, your generic More Crusher. Yeah. Um, it makes it hard to think about taking Gordrak unless you have some super awesome um, strategy or, you know, you're looking to really maximize that big wag and you've got a plan. Um, that yeah. 80 points is essentially a, a war doc. It's a, yep. um, it could almost be another unit. Yep. Could be an endless spell if you want to go down that route as well. Like there's, yeah, there's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think he, it's, it's a real shame actually, because I'd love to see him be played a bit more, but yeah. I, I think time will fall uh, with Gordrak. Uh, immediate thoughts are uh, maybe not. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking in the big war, but now with what Ben said, maybe not. Uh, I'd like to see some players give it a go. I mean, I've seen what Ash has done uh, with like MSU style and Bible, and, and I think he's changed the game with that. So uh, the book's so fresh and so young. Who knows what's going to happen with it in the next couple of months. Yeah, and he might become more attractive depending on what uh, how the meta kind of changes. But right now... Uh, it sounds like the the, the Gordrak is just not as incentivized as a generic um, more crusher. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Cool. Any other hero choices that we like? We think stands out. You know, uh, we've got the mega boss on foot. Whether it's the uh, the big boss that's a savage boss, or you've got your your orc war mega boss. Um, any other ones we're not walking home without? Um, I think like the Savage Big Boss for me, he used to be a go-to, but I don't think you'll see him very much anymore. He's, um, he's an interesting one, actually. I think he's kind of, uh, he used to be like the, the center of a lot of armies, particularly like the Cunning Ruck and stuff, but he's not going to be around anymore. He's got a cool ability, but I just don't see it as being, uh, kind of your go-to anymore. He's got Why is that? Is, is, is it because we've got more heroes to choose from or... Uh, I think he got more ways to, yeah, yeah I think he, for buff piece, he used to stack his ability where you generate extra attacks. Um, he does that now at the start of the command, uh, at the combat phase, sorry. Um, and he's just, I mean, I think before he was kind of the go-to because of Cunning Ruck. 
mm. now just i mean he's in my list i, I run him just because he's a cool model um and he's not bad to have because he does get the kind of the counter the um always strike last ability through slanesh because if he piles in and attacks then you can automatically pick a unit holy within 12 and they automatically pile and attack before your opponent gets to pick so that's kind of a nice buff but for me um He's probably one you won't see very often. Uh, the Maniac Weird Knob has to get a mention because he's um, the his he used to be able to per game to reroll a casting ability. He now gets that every turn. He can do that, so and that's including in an unbind. So it's very cool. Squeeze the squig. That's it. Got to squeeze the squig, mate. That's the way to do it. <laughs> at least at least twice a day. So. <laughs> uh, as uh is it the wolf on wall street would say though those are rookie numbers there gabby yeah <laughs> <laughs> brogan any other heroes you like uh why uh look we we definitely touched on the mega boss on more crush that when we were talking about quadro before um i think um even though he's a he's a pricey little number he's a 460 uh he's he's damage output can really just get up there with uh, certain buffs uh, in the game. Yeah, people have been talking about you know, like a 60 damage uh, more crusher. Um, all things going well for him. Uh, you can customize him. Um, you can customize his mount as well now, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, you can add two inch movement to him. You can add uh, four up uh, save, which counts against um, what is it? Uh, spells, mortal wounds. That's uh, that's nice for durability. You can give him iCloud for plus one save. Uh, you can make him a big fat boy that goes crashing in there for an extra D3 mortal wounds when he goes in uh, for his crushing bulk, which is quite nice. Um, I just like the versatility and the raw damage output from him. From him, I think he's a good fun piece. Any any recommendations on the loadout uh, for weapons? Like, would you go like the Gore Hacker and Chopper? Would you like? How would you load out the Mega Boss on on the more Crusher? Yeah, I go the Gore Hacker and Chopper. Uh, the, uh, for the first reason, it's eight attacks, uh, which is lovely. It's three plus three plus and one damage two. Um, obviously, you can find ways to buff that. Um, I the Rip Two Fist is interesting now. That's changed to um, the single profile with the Boss Chopper. So you're looking at a single inch range, six attacks, three up, three up, and one damage two. Uh, that Rip Two Fist is giving him an unmodified six plus rebound wound style save, which I, I think can be quite useful. I mean, you can have a bunch of arrow boys shoot him and he's going to fling those arrows back at them on sixes. That's fun. Yeah. Can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly right. But uh, for me... For me, it's the extra, it's that two inch range uh, on top of that big mount. Um, I've struggled in the past to get all these attacks in for different reasons. Usually MSU chaff just sitting in the way of the thing I actually want to have to face. And that two inches is a nice way to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good, good call out. Gaming, have you got any thoughts on, on the loadout of a mega boss on a more crusher? Uh, I think Brogan's all over it, man. He's um, the, a lot of people are saying the go-to is your weirden where you start getting that spell, um, you know, to get the, the bounce for a spell. Um, I, I think a, a fat one's a very nice one as well, which I, I want to say that with tongue in cheek, but um, I think it's, uh, you know, you've, you've got some really nice abilities in the, the more Crusher. Um, and as Brogan said, if you, you can get him to ridiculous damage, you know, doing 60 damage is just hectic. And it, I hear it happen more often than not, actually, which is kind of weird. You hear those stories of, because everyone's just playing Iron Jaws at the moment, which is great. It's very cool yeah. to see. Um, it's kind of like their secret army that they had, their secret shame, and so they're very excited now to run them, which is good. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a big assumption that uh, your more crusher is going to be charging. So um, mm -hmm. you do keep that in mind, and I think the two-inch, um, thinking about that threat range and not being, uh, you know, being clogged up with chaff um, and having a bit more of a choice on who you're, you're putting those ridiculous amounts of damage into, uh, is, a, is a consideration, um, mm. if nothing more. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and it, I just, oh, sorry, go, mate. No, no, I was just going to say, it's it's actually always been a dream is to run the more Crusher. Um, it was one thing I always looked, you know, playing Savages, you know, having a big monster is really cool for a centerpiece. And, a, you know, the stuff you can do with more Crushers now is very cool. Um, very yeah. excited to see. Yeah. Brody, you going to say something now? 
Yeah, I was just going to add there, uh, their strength and victory rules actually had a really nice change. Uh, before it was kill a hero or monster, he's going to go um, a wound and attack with the other that he's inflicted that damage with. Uh, now it's make a kill in the combat phase and he goes a wound and attack. Uh, that big attack all happened. That's going to happen. 9, 10, 11, 12, like that's, that's going to be up there. And then you can give him the extra damage and you know, watch 60 go higher. Yep. It's crazy. Yes, it is. That's sort of crazy. Here I am with my six wind guys just rolling around, having a great time. <laughs> hey, man, bone split is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is scary. This is scary. And there are so many Iron Jaws players. If, if people didn't flip their armies, uh, there are a lot of Iron Jaws armies out there. And uh, oh, yeah. Come back, uh, and people are going to forget about Slanesh very quickly. They're oh, going to yeah. forget about Daughters of Cain very quickly. Uh, Iron Jaws may wreck some face. He's cool. All right. Any other hero choices we need to call out, or uh, is that it? Like we've talked about the battle line. I mean, we haven't really spoken about two things. One is uh, is that Underworld's Iron Skull Boys. Uh, and then second of all, Gammy keeps referring to it, and it's not in the book, but it's great to call out our, our rogue idol friend. But before we do that, uh, Iron Skull Boys, uh, the unique 80-point uh, unit, is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> All right, all right. Really Five cool model. Like they're, they're actually my iron jaws that I have, so they're they're actually the ones that I've done. So it is. Um, I just yeah, you don't you're not going to see them for eighty points. If they were fifty points, maybe, but eighty points is. I mean, fifty points would be too cheap, but eighty points is yeah. You're better off paying for five, I uh, hard boys for ninety. So yeah, in my head. Broken. Do we talk about the mega boss on foot? I feel like we might have missed him. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't get to talk about him. Um, I, I think he was a little bit of a loser uh, with this edition of the book. Um, I used to run him previously and quite enjoy him. Um, he does everything that he did before. He also gets the extra wound and the extra attack, which is lovely. Um, but he's he's lost any real, um, like, buffing ability um, to a brute-style army, which is where you used to place him. Uh, traditionally, he would give you, your brutes uh, within range of him a, a reroll of one to hit. Um, which is which is great, um, and now he just doesn't offer that. Um, he's the same price, and I, I'm finding it hard to fit him into a list, to be honest. Yeah. Why would you take him if you were going to bring him? Why Why is he there? Honestly, uh, I would take him to have a cheap character, uh, a cheap wire. Um, if you want more bodies on the board and you don't want the crusher, I'd take him. Okay. Fair enough. I didn't know why I still take the crush. He's awesome. Yeah. Poor boss on foot. Yeah. yeah. No go. He's cool. Great model. Size of a dreadnought. Looks really cool. But yeah, just you, you've got better options, I think. Um, yeah. Again, shame. But Speaking of dreadnoughts and things that look like dreadnoughts, <laughs> uh, you have one. Uh, you yeah, have a, a dreadnought yeah. looking. Uh, uh, what is this rock rock idol or rogue idol that uh, if people are being really sharp with this, they're looking at their books right now going, what on Where earth is, is a rock yeah. idol? Where is this rogue yeah. idol? Where do I find? Yeah. It's not in my book. Uh, Gammy's on crack. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is he on about? What are you talking about here, mate? The old Rogel. So he, um, I love him. He's he's basically, so he's a Forge World model um, available through Forge World. Uh, when the, Warclans book dropped. They um, decided to give him both of the keywords of Bone Splitters and Iron Jaws, which uh, I, I couldn't believe it when they did it. I I thought it was the internet kind of doing the usual thing of oh, I'll try and you know try and you know get some you know words out there so people start freaking out. But basically, the Rogue Idol. I'll get his War Scroll up for you actually, because yeah, while you, um, while you while you bring that up, uh, I'll yeah. call out the Rogue Idol's been around for a while, and there's been really good mixed destruction lists that have had a Rogue Idol or two Rogue Idols actually. Uh, I think of one of the Breeze Hammer Boys, uh, Dino. Yeah, Dino. Dino Matthews yeah. has been running one, one one quite successfully, um, but unfortunately, it never had the Bone Splitters or the Iron Jaws key, key, key keyword. 
which meant that you had to go general destruction and it wasn't that enticing. But now that it's got the keywords, um, it's a huge boost. So if, you, I, if I was building a list, I'd definitely be getting a rogue idol because uh, not only they're a cool model, um, they just do so much for a force. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, um, for me, Dino's got three, so he currently owns three, um, and that's because he's a madman. <laughs> but um, he uh, he's always raved about rogue idols, and I get it. Like, I 100% get it. They're fantastic. Uh, I ran one, you know, as allies option because he uh, used to be allies, which, again, like what you mentioned before, without the bone splitters keyword, it was a 400-point investment in ally pool, and you couldn't do much with him. He was kind of a nice centerpiece. Um, but now with his getting both of the, the abilities um, and the keywords, it, it, he becomes a bit of a powerhouse. So a lot of people were not impressed by his update, by the way. there are, I think the internet kind of was quite divided by him because he lost a couple of abilities, but I think he's gained a lot more in, in the way that they changed him. So Because he has been around for a long time. Eighth edition fantasy, he used to roll around. Um, Sigma, he rolls around now. So he, he's having a great time. So why are we taking him? Why why is he now reconsidering? Uh, it's worthwhile taking him, or her? I don't, we don't. I don't know. Yeah, man. Yeah, what a, you know it. Um, let let's go with whatever. Um, he he can it can identify however it likes. So it. with the rogue idol, yeah. yeah, that's it. Um, so basically, the buffs that you get for it, I think you know, as I mentioned before, I've always wanted to run a, a more crusher. Um. You know, that have a centerpiece model that has the hitting power of big stabbers because big stabbers for me, um, they, they've, they're they a really nice sort of hard hitter in the Bone Splitters book. Um, but the rogue idols kind of replace them in my mind for, for essentially the same, you know, 400 points worth of big stabbers for 400 points of rogue idol is a bit more resilient. So basically what you get is 16 wounds, four up save. Um, his attacks is kind of where we start to see the bonuses here. So you've got his boulder fists. So he uh, does two attacks with those, threes and twos, rend two, damage D6. And then he has 10 stomping feet attacks, which are threes and threes, rend two, damage two. So at first glance, you kind of go, cool, he's, he's a bit of a powerhouse. Then what you start to do is think, okay, well, what's the buffs that I can give him? So I can give him in a bone splitter's army, uh, I can make him generate every time he rolls a six, two extra attacks at the moment. So with a, a war boss nearby and um, the maniac weird knob with his spell. Uh, so if he rolls a six to hit, he generates two extra hits on top of that. So that's what's what's changed about those rules. Um, another thing is I can make him fly and double move. And if I double cast, it's triple move. So he. So when you say double seven. or triple move, are you talking about piling in, or are you talking about like literally? It's moving moved, again yeah. in the yep, movement so he, phase or yeah so he gets it in the movement phase so yeah it's not a he doesn't become like pile in nine if he if he rolls the spell but if it's a spell that i cast so it's breath of gork and is the spell i'm talking about it used to be our hand of gork um movement 10 base when it's no wounds taken and with a double move and fly he can go 20 inches if he rolls double to to cast it against him, then it's 30 inches with fly. So he can fly over chaff. So he keeps fly for until the next turn. Yeah. Uh, doesn't keep the double move though for, um, so like if you roll a 12 for your charge, it's not like he moves 24 inches. That'd be fantastic. Right, so, so in the movement time. phase, you can extend the move from 10 to 20, Correct. or if, yeah. you, if you're really lucky, you could extend it from 10 to 30, which is 30, yeah. Uh, yeah. huge. It's huge, yeah. And he, um, you know, if you give him plus one to hit uh, with the Brutal Beast Spirits, I run a, with my list at the moment, I've got a War Chanter in there as ally. So he gives him an extra damage with his War Beats ability. Um, and then he can also get plus two to his save as well if I do the War Doc Dance or Cunning Beast Spirit. So it becomes so what, a two what plus it, save. Holy shit. And then he has a five up. Uh, DPR. So if he takes a wound or a mortal wound, um, he gets a five up save. So there's um, an additional then, save after that. Oh, so two, we're, we're, down to a, we're down to a two plus potentially. Two plus. Yep. So if and he then takes two. wounds, a five plus. And then because he's bone splitters, he also gets war paint. So he gets a six up save as well. Whoa, whoa, we are. <laughs> so wow. he is he is my dream boat and uh, i enjoy running him. He's, he's just a really nice solid piece that's reliable. Um, you know, it's before, a cracking centerpiece model as well, right? Absolutely. Like it's a beautiful piece, like it's unique. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, And, you know, Rob said uh, when they were talking about bone splitters on his podcast, he said, you know, you look at bone splitters and they're looking like the old school fantasy army. You've got a big block of 30 guys with spears and shields. You've got the arrows in the back shooting over the top. If you run a Rogal, you've got the the centerpiece model that's moving up and smashing stuff. And yeah. And then you've got cavalry and the pigs that are riding around the side and flanking stuff. So. Well, yeah, your man, big block, um, your big block of orcsy is your is your anvil, and your uh, your rogue absolutely. idol or two is is is, is, is that hammer. big hammer that's yep. going to come in. Would you take just yep. one, or would you go more than one? Yep. How could fit to him, um, but I think then you start losing out on your bodies and bone splitters. You definitely need bodies for in an iron jaws army. I'm not really sure if you'll see them very often. Um, uh, I'd be keen to see them in action in an iron jaws army, but I think the more crushes, just you better better option there for for dishing out the dirt so yeah and you've seen lists you know where people have gone double more crusher uh i oh, guess yeah. that rogue idol is playing is playing that in that same space um correct yeah. brogan yeah. do you have any thoughts on the rogue idol is that going to take over one of your more crusher spots or not 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 as attractive for you no i i think those are those points are pretty valuable when you play uh, Iron Jaws. Um, oh, I think Iron Jaws, especially with some little crusher sitting in that place. Yeah. As cool as he sounds. Yeah, yeah, he's frigging, he's incredible. I've always awed about it. Uh, I remember in the old War Scroll where uh, I, I wanted to put him in a Gits, uh, Gits army. And um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it still gives pluses to cast magic, but yeah, you know, having yeah. an endless spell list where I've got a whole bunch of yeah. git wizards around him, they just yeah. throw a whole bunch of endless spells with additional buffs. Um, it was very, yeah. very cool potential. Yeah, he, he still gives that buff out. And the the reason why the internet wasn't happy with his change was because he used to halve the wounds that he'd take. So if he was or halve the damage he'd take, it was like uh, the old Stonehorn rule. rule. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And I think they just decided to take that out of it because it was too much to manage. Really, he's a tough one especially if you've got a DPR save as well. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, the last unit we haven't given credit to, and it definitely we can't move forward without talking about it, is the Savage uh, Big Stabbers. Um, yeah. We cannot t- not talk about Stabbers. Um, we do we still like them, or have they lost their spot in the new book? Uh, I still love them. I still think they got a great spot in a book. 100 points for eight wounds where you've got an extra attack now and a plus one to hit to them as well. They used to be fours to hit with two attacks. They're now threes to hit with three attacks. They got run and charge as well. Oh, my God. They got so much better. It's great. I think it is one of those ones. I read a lot of people talking about bone splitters, and I I get the argument in the other sense as well to say that they have changed because they used to be able to throw their big stabber when they die. Um, Yeah. Yeah unit within three and you know that would be in the shooting phase in the hero phase it now clearly says it's only in the combat phase once they die from combat um i genuinely think that was a silly rule anyway so it was kind of or an outdated rule in a sense so that's you know once people started to see the list starting to or army books realigning with that holy within or with the without the as many re-rolls um big stabbers for me still have a place definitely um plus you get them in buying the box set anyway so they come with the when you're buying you know all your dudes that you need on foot they're part of that box set so it's not like you have to go out and buy them separately and purposefully so you've got them there regardless and i think that's you know a really nice nice thing to have in the army so you get two for a hundred and you can go up to eight or essentially four four stabbers with two models a piece do you Do you recommend taking larger units of the big stabbers if you were going to have would you have would you even have more than one one uh, two man group, uh, or do yep. you think more smaller units of them uh, would be the better way to go? Yeah, um, it's an interesting question actually because I think they have merit in running in small. The synergies work with and with Iron Jaws as well. I think you're better off taking big units. Um, you'll probably see. I would say a unit of six would be your maximum. I wouldn't really suggest an eight unit um, because if you're starting to go down that route, you're looking at 400 points for for eight big stabbers, which is great. Um, But then it's also a big point sink, whereas 300 points is a nice medium there. I I feel like it's kind of your nice outlet there. But then again, you kind of sit there and say, well, 300 points, I can get 30 more boys on the table. So that's where it's that trade-off. What do you want? Do you want more bodies? Do you want... 
um, hard hitters. They are the only rend in the army. Um, rend two on their their big stabbers. The rest of the army has zero rend. Um, so that's where it's that kind of trade off. Do you do you want to play around with that? And I think with the ability to pick on the monster table now as well, um, you can get them to hit twos, hitting on twos, which a big unit of big stabbers will be really nice with that. So I think it's a really good question actually. But um, I, I'd be keen to see someone run MSU, but I, I don't I've, know the merit to it. So I've I've only ever seen people run MSU. I've seen one person run a large block. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I traditionally find when you've got those large blocks, they're just a target. They've just got a big yeah. priority and like you're going to shoot yeah. the crap out of them or put cast spells on them. But when I've seen them most successfully, I remember uh, Matt Campbell um, back in the day when he was running his splitters, um, yeah. he'd always have them as MSU and they were almost yeah. be like uh, two, two one-man groups essentially, uh, yep. two 100-pointers. Yeah. And they would be almost flankers where you'd have these big blocks of, you know, the Arrow Boys or big blocks of the Savage Boys. They're all moving forward. You've got these two little, like, cavalry bases that you're kind of ignoring, you kind of yep. blended in, and then they get into combat and absolutely, you know, yeah. stab and you in the eye. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you, you, as an opponent, you're not really looking out for this one base. But no. when you start seeing two, three, and four, you're like, right, I know they're going to do damage and I need to make them a priority. So, uh, and as you say, as a, yeah, as a man. point, yeah, six, really good point. 300 or 400 points is a lot. Yeah. And it's battle. It's, oh, no, no, you, you asked cool. earlier, it's, it's actually one thing I just thought of then is battle shock. Uh, massive weakness for bone splitters is battle shock. Our average bravery is five. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's where you start to see when you lose models, you do, you do lose more to battle shock as well. They're brave to an extent, you know, you can only be so crazy. Yeah, yeah, they're but, but they're worthwhile investment. But as you said, you start putting in, uh, you know, uh, three hundred or four hundred points, then that's that's a more crusher. That's a yeah. big block of thirty. That's yeah. that's a, a rogue idol. There's a lot of options. So exactly, yeah, I, I still think they have their place. I just I, I'd be really keen to see them. I've got them in my pure bone splitters list where I've got two hundred and twenty five wounds on the table. I've got a unit of four because um, I had two hundred points left over. If I wanted to, I could drop the uh, big boss on foot and put in another unit or two. So that's where you kind of start to see that trade-off. So a unit of six big stabbers is nice, but yeah, it's, they're, they're a good good little unit. I still love them. Yeah, I definitely would like to see more of them. They're cool. Yeah. Um, now- Six do absolute wondrous things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I find them terrifying. We, we've got a, uh, a regular um, guy in our gaming group, uh, shout out to Mojo from B3 Mortal. Um, he, he bubbles them with his more boys and he runs a block of six and uh, you just can't get at them because he's got 20 savage orbs around them. Um, if you're not shooting, yeah, that's a different game. Magic, sure. Um, but when he plays them right and you, he takes on a combat force, takes full advantage of that uh, three-inch range yeah. plus hit and then you're watching that and then two D3 damage, just, just the highlight things. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. you got to protect them. That's the key. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of protection, uh, something that you may not want to protect would be your allies. Uh, <laughs> um, so you've got a couple of cool ally choices. You've got uh, your big wag, you've got your gits, uh, your gloom spike gits can be brought in. Uh, if you're going down the bone splitter route, you've got your iron jaws and your gits. And then if you're iron jaws, you've got your bone splitters and your gits. So uh, the book works with each other as an ally. Why would you do that? Potentially you want to take down, you want the Iron Jaws allegiance, but you just want a small portion of, of splitters or vice versa. But uh, Gloom Spike Gits uh, is across the board for everyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're not going to talk about Iron Jaws. We're not talking about Bone Splitters because we've already talked about them as, uh, as, yeah. as units. And you can obviously hopefully choose if you're going to take them as an ally or a, f a full force. But is there anything in the Gloom Spike Gits, uh, Gammy, that um, that could be worthwhile or, you know, it could maybe bridge a weakness that you, you have? Um, anything that you can think of? Yeah, stand out for me would be Fungoid Camp Cave Shaman and um, your Endless Spells as well. The Gloom Spike Gits Endless Spells are fantastic. So, you know, if you've got a Malevolent Moon or you want to run the, the Spiders as well, if you want to slow down your opponent, the Spiders are fantastic for... Now even just a mortal wound crawling out of any terrain piece. And a lot of people do tend to keep heroes around terrain pieces. So you just pop them out and pick on, you know, start bullying people and, and make them have to dispel the, the endless spell as well. It is the one 
Uh, thing I was a bit disappointed with was that we didn't get endless spells with um, the War Clans. I thought, you know, it was a great opportunity to to put a big foot of Gork. You now it's disappeared from, you know, the the um, weird knob shaman. So I don't know. It's for me, uh, Gloom Spot. If you wanted with Iron Jaws more bodies at a cheaper cost, you might go with the the little guys. Um, but yeah, for me, I'd say the spells and the wizard would be the big thing because you get a four up. CP. Boy, okay. They're really tough. Uh, their four up after save is crazy. You, you don't think about it. It's just, they just sit there popping out spells. They can cast two once per game if they like. Just eat a mushroom, have a great time. Um, yeah, they're a cool little unit. So I, I'd put them in. Brogan, anything you'd add? Um, yeah, look, I was always looking at that fungoid uh, cave shaman option. Uh, I, I only ever avoided it because um, I was classically taking a uh, wall drop list. And, yeah, he always took that to two drops. I uh, just could never find the allowance uh, to do that after spending six points on a new talent. Now you don't have to worry about that as much. Mm -hmm. But I think for everything he adds, something like a Wurzog Prophet can add that. Yeah. Um, I mean, even even your weird knob shamans. There's uh, a command trait way to to add extra command points. There's an artifact way to add extra command points. You can just buy a command point. I don't know if you have to anymore. Uh, I, I think you can stay pretty pure to the book itself and get everything that he was putting out, apart from that durability and uh, ignoring the wounds. But hey, yeah, you, you're focusing on punching things in the face and not staying alive, right? <laughs> That's it. The only thing I would call out, I, th I think you guys have, uh, have called it out, is a spell casting. Um, you've got some mm. cool spells, whether it's uh, the Scuttle Tide, which is a mm. very cheap uh, terrain, well, it's an endless spell that kind of pops out near a terrain piece anywhere on the board, um, does mm. damage, blocks up armies, very, very cool. Uh, yep. The Malevolent Moon has a crazy threat range. I think it's like 24 inches. You know, yep. you, it's it's a really good threat range. You can kind of debuff magic with it. Um, the Arachnorok Cauldron is really cool as well. It allows you to pick yep. uh, any of the endless, sorry, any of the spells from the Gits book. Um, and the Teleporting Hand of Gork might be one that uh, might be beneficial. Or there's one that lets you fight last. So yeah, the Itchy Nuisance um, is a good one. That's Itchy Nuisance goes yeah. well. Um, yeah. So there's a couple of cool things that could help you. Uh, but I think, you know, as we've discussed here today, there's a lot of cool options in this book and maybe you're not going to have the points for 150 points if you take the the Fungoid Cave Shaman along with an Endless Spell or two. But yeah. Um, yeah. Or you might want to go down uh, the, the the Battle Line Gits mm -hmm. and taking a, a unit of 20 Grots for 130 points. So if you're looking for a cheap Battle Line that maybe you can leave behind an objective or to screen up the board from like an alpha strike, um, that 130 points for 20, 20 bodies um, could be a worthwhile investment in this book. Uh, but that's my thoughts being a Gits player. I don't know what you orc guys think about my little boys. They're just weird little dudes that hang out in caves. I dig them. It's got to learn how to crump properly, that's all. That's their big thing. Is that learning how to fight? Yeah. We got squeaks. We don't need. We don't yeah, need you got squeaks. That's it. Yeah. See, hey, I, you I might want to take I squeeze squeaks. So you know, that's what I'm about. You know, maybe, maybe you take a unit of boing grots as well and do the mortal wounds on the charge. Yeah, so, that'd be. That's, that's another option. In the past, yeah. I think they. I think they're really. Yeah, that's good. Good, good option. And hey, add a, a unit of fanatics in there as well and pop out and uh, do some damage, but. Mm. <laughs> This is not this is not the gloom spike git show. This is the uh, the, the, orc, <laughs> the orc show. So I'm going to shut up. I was going to say, do you want some uh, do you want some aurochs with those uh, gloom spike there, Magro? Um. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think we can ally with them. I don't think gloom. I don't think I don't think it works the other way. I don't think it works the other way. Well, that's not very tolerant. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I, no, I think it's yeah. you guys you guys won't listen to us. Gits, so you're like shut up. Yeah, that's push, the push, about pushing right. away. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Cool. So we talked allies, which is your gits, and then obviously bone jaw, uh, but bone jaws, bone splitters, and iron jaws uh, work between themselves. Uh, and then the final thing that you guys have that uh, is worthwhile talking about is your bazillion uh, war scroll battalions. Now yeah. you have an industrial amount, probably the same amount as Stormcast. You've got the Ard Fist, the Big Rock, the Brawl, the Brutal Rock, the Brute Fist, the Gore Fist, the Iron Fist, the Cop Rock, the Cunning Rock, the Snagger Rock, the Teeth Rock, the Weird Fist. 
<laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of Italians. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Which ones would you call out as beneficial or, or you know, the the more popular of, of the builds? Gammy. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Sorry, um, awkward pause. Mine's, mine's easy because it's just two in my head. Um, you've got Cunning Ruck. So Cunning Ruck's still around. Um, used to be the bad boy of, of AOS back in the day uh, with the initial GHB because they were pretty horrifying to play against. Then started to die off a bit, um, mainly because you used to be able to run, you know, like two units of 40 Yarra boys and they were dishing out ridiculous amounts of shots per turn. Um, so what you've got now in the Cunning Ruck is they've made a restriction on the size of the units, so you can only take units of 20. Um, so the, previously there used to be 30, right? Th yeah, so there was yep. no limit on what you could take. So um, it's a combination of Savage Orcs and Arrow Boys. Um, basically the, the bonus of taking that is that if you're wholly within 12 of the um, Savage Orc Big Boss, then you can shoot if, as if it was the shooting phase, move as though it's the moving phase. Um, I don't think you can pile in an attack anymore, actually. I'll have to check that. that uh, that's one thing. No, the, the, the unit can make a move or a shoot. Uh, or a shoot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Because they used to be able to pile in an attack, so they've actually taken that one away. So um, for me, it's still worth taking if you go with units of 20. Um, you know, Savage Orcs used to be uh, kind of like your, your tax in that cunning ruck. Um, people, if they could, they'd just take bulk arrow boys. Um, now you can just do that. So you can just do two units of 20 arrow boys if you like. Um, I actually saw Peter Atkinson uh, wrote a list the other day with Cunning Ruck and he had three units of 20 arrow boys as his base sort of thing, as his core. And I think that's got merit. Um, I think the Cunning Ruck still has a place. Um, it's not as painful as it used to be because uh, the only way to buff shooting to generate extra attacks is the Maniac Weird Knob and he can only do that on one unit and you can't make it a plus to hit or anything like that. So... Um, yeah, that, that one for me, I think, still got some pretty good moves because with the tireless trackers, you can move up at the start of the game, get a bit closer, surprise your opponent. Um, then the other one is T-Fruck. So the T-Fruck, big stab, as we were talking about before, if we wanted to take an MSU-style army of T-Fruck um, with big stabbers, you could do that, or if you wanted just two big blocks with a big boss. for being near the big today siege for that one, which is pretty crazy. Four attacks, sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's where the merit comes in. For me, uh, Bone Splitters aren't as command points thirsty as what Iron Jaws are. So Iron Jaws, you really want to be managing your CP, get that going. For me, I'm using command points for either re-rolling ones to hit in shooting or to stop my guys running away. That's what I'm finding command points to use for at the moment. So in, in the in the bone splitter route, the battalion yep. isn't as important. Obviously, it reduces Correct. the amount of drops, the additional command yep. ability, yep. all that stuff. But it's as you said, you're not as hungry for mm -hmm. CP, so it's not like you have to uh, take a battalion. But yep. they're probably your two standout ones, which is the T yep. rock, which is requiring the the big boss and the two to five big stabbers, while the cunning rock um, is two to five uh, of the savage oryx or the uh, arrow boys. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Cool. Uh, Brogan, yourself from an Iron Jaws perspective, is there any battalions that uh, stand out for you? Yeah, I've got a couple I like, but uh, I thought Gammy set me up for a real good segue um, to talk about um, command point uh, spending because it, it's definitely the economy you've got to look at for our Iron Jaws because there's amazing buffs, but they're, they're very command point first. You see, you look at where you spend them. Um, and that, that leads me straight into using an Iron Fist battalion. Um, so the Iron Fist Battalion is made up of three to five units. Uh, they can be Brutes, they can be Gore Grunters or Ard Boys in any combination. So you get the flexibility, which is awesome, especially if you've got an existing collection because you can find any way to put them all in there and all battle line. Um, the first benefit to this one is that you can pick a Brute Boss um, or a Gore Grunter Boss um, and you add two wounds to that wound's character, uh, to the wound characteristic. So you're looking at a five wound brute boss or the grunter, he goes up to seven wounds. So for me, that's usually where the bosses can be. And then on top of that, once in your hero phase, uh, this big boss from this Italian is going to uh, use the minor destroyer's command ability as if it was a mega boss and without spending a command point. So we're talking about uh, free movement, a free attempt to charge or a free pilot and attack. Um, if you want to talk about economies and point spending, that's where it's at. Nasty. Yeah. 
I love it. I love putting it on a big unit of gore grunters. Um, it means you can send them up a flank or in the guts or wherever you just want to kill something. Um, you stack your extra damage from your chanter and then just let them go. Um, and then they don't have to be around any heroes for any of that um, synergizing. They can do it themselves. And I mean, if, you, if you're looking at a unit of uh, six grunters, for example, it's now 32 wounds, seven wounds on that character. They're going to stay around for a while, especially when they're eliminating anything that can kill them in a short range. This is what literally happened to me last week. Literally it happened to me last week. There was two war chanters. There was a mega boss on foot. There was a mega boss on war crusher. And there was two units of six piggies and two units of three piggies. And that's literally what happened. They they did some some beats. They ran up and uh, wrecked face. So... I am but weeks away from probably making that a unit of mine uh, and then having to do the same job in the, um, in the Iron Fist. Battalions, though. Is there any battalions that stand out for you? Because you've got your Ard Fist, you have... What have you got? So you've got Ard Fist, Brute Fist, Gore Fist, Iron Fist, Weird Fist. Yep. Um, so the other standouts for me are the Ard Fist. Um, I was talking about bodies um, and board control being a real issue for Iron Jaws. Uh, this helps a bit with that. Um, so it's one or a chanter and three to five units of hard boys. Um, essentially, if that chanter is still alive and you have a unit wiped out, a four plus a new unit of hard boys will be set up. Um, so it's up to 10 models will be set up uh, wholly within six inches of the battlefield and more than nine from enemy units. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. That one is That's mental. That is crazy. And, and you know, you, you had said that Ard Boys were an easy choice for a battle line anyway. So if you went down this route, you're probably going to have a War Chanter anyway. It's just choosing at least three units of those Ard Boys and uh, being able to generate a different additional units, especially late towards the game where, you know, you, you're chucking dudes on challenging objectives, you know, um, anywhere on the board. Uh, that's scary as hell. Yeah. Love it. Any other ones that would stand out? Obviously, if you're going down the piggy route, the um, the gore fist, you know, um, is, yeah. is definitely a good one. I think the gore fist is cool as well. I mean, once again, a, a big character up to seven wounds instead of five. That's nice. Um, in your hero phase, uh, choosing a unit from the battalion, holy within 18 inches, the big boss. Uh, basically, you get a normal move, um, and that's awesome. I, I already think there's enough in the army that can give that to you, but hey, getting it for free is still real nice. I look at the other ones like Weird Fist and that. I'm not. I'm not as sold on them um, unless you had a specific build. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe you think differently. I'm totally on the fence with uh, with Magic um, and my doors. To be completely honest, um, I haven't run it for the last the last since Capcom, um, and I've had no issues not running it. It just uh, if, if it's something not to worry about, it speeds up the game, and I just focus on the, the power of the enemy in combat. Um, so uh, I think it's definitely builds where magic is going to do a lot. You can get a lot of tricks in there. For example, green hand for cork. You can get awesome um, positioning on the table and some cheeky charges, especially if you, you stack that with our boys that mean real big buffs to get charges. You can catch people out of position and then deliver that big hammer blow. But I don't know. I, I just think the army does what it does real well without magic. So... That, that's going to cause some contention. People love the magic, but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, no, that's, that's fair. Point, man. Yeah, I'd, I'd, really I'd love. Point. I'd love other people's thoughts. Are you uh, ignoring the magic phase altogether? Is it something that uh, you want to play in, and that's why you take the fungoid cave shaman, or you want to go a magic caster? Um, mm. You know, I'd, I'd love to hear what other people's builds are. I, I have noticed that uh, magic is not not uh prevalent in most iron jaws or bone splitter armies yeah it's not it's not it's not a, a core strategy at least i mean if, if you can cut a phase out of your game it speeds it up i mean i'm talking 20 play here um anytime i can cut a phase out, hey uh, shooting's pretty much all but cut out as well um you're looking at real quick games and that that's good in a tournament setting. yeah yeah cool so we've talked to all the unit choices. We've talked about allies. We've talked about battalions. Uh, we're now going to start moving into customization. Unless I've missed something that you boys want to bring up uh, from unit selection, or maybe is there another um, Forge World thing that I'm missing? <laughs> no, the only thing I would 
probably mention, I don't know if you've got plans to talk about the spell lore of Bone Splitters at all, because I know... Yeah, we get, we're, we're up, literally we'll get about there. to go into... The, oh, yeah, we're going man. into Sub Allegiance yeah, now. Sweet, we, let's now, do it. Now we're talking about customization. So now we've kind of yep. picked stuff and got a good idea, uh, yep. especially with this particular book. It's... Um, uh it's quite challenging especially for a, a newer player so we've got a foundation we're going to pick you know more crushes rogue idols we're picking odd boys we're picking savage we've got an idea it's like how do we now tweak it make it go yep. from good to great how do we find synergies how do we start tweaking it so they go even better so um we've got some allegiances now we've got our iron jaws we're going to have pick we've got a whole bunch of them have spell laws um so I guess where, where should we probably start? Should we maybe start with the sub allegiances that sit under under each of them? Yeah, sure. man. I think that's a yeah good way to go. Yeah. So, all right, it's it's such an interesting book. So, yeah. Brogan, I'm coming to you. We're going to go talk the Iron Jaws first because it's at the start of the book as opposed to the Bone Splitters. But you have the choices of the Iron Sons. You have the Blood Tooths. You have the Choppers. Um, is that it? They are your three. Yeah. That's right. And that's cool. more than enough because all three are pretty damn awesome. So for, for anyone who's watching this and they're like, what on earth is Anthony talking about here? Essentially, you've chosen that you're choosing an Iron Jaws army and then uh, you is this an option or do I have to take one of these three, Brogan? No, you don't have to take one. Cool, because in, in, in a lot of armies you can choose if you want to, but uh, right. by taking this sub-allegiance, um, you are forced to take a command trait and you're forced certain things. Uh, but there are trade-offs to do so. So um, of the three Iron Sons, uh, Blood Tooths and the Choppers, uh, Brogan, is there any of the ones that you think stand out and uh, why Why do they stand out for you? Yeah, look, at first glance and uh, my first initial list builds from this, um, I betrayed my beloved Blood Tooths and I've shifted to Iron Sons. Okay. So Iron Sons, what do we get for it? We're going to get... Uh, the Iron Sun's Cunning, which is going to be subtract one from the hit rolls uh, made by enemies targeting the Iron Suns. Um, which is huge. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah. Um, so that your your army essentially is all Iron Suns, um, I'm assuming, <laughs> unless, you, unless you've taken an ally. No, no, not at all. I've, I've just cashed in on all that uh, awesome Iron Jaws tasty abilities. <laughs> Uh, all, all Iron Suns for me, um, and I've really just um, stacked quite a turn one. Um, I've, I've got the big pig unit in there, as we've uh, discussed before. I, I can still see the uh, look of horror when you think about it, um, but uh, I really think in combination with all of those pigs and more crushes getting stuck into you in turn one, for you to double down and say, okay, for the next two rounds, you are minus one to hit me with everything I've chucked at you, that's real powerful. Yeah. So, uh, so everyone. So, if you if you're Iron Jaws and you take uh, the Iron Iron Sun Allegiance, everyone everyone who's not an ally gets that keyword Iron Suns. Is that correct, or is Iron Suns already sitting in other War Scrolls? Uh, no, I believe it's uh, only if you take them as uh, that particular uh, War Clean. Cool. So they 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 gain the the Iron Suns keyword. That's right. Cool. Yeah. Just in case someone's looking at this, going, I'm looking at my War Scroll. I don't see Iron Suns. W what's the uh, benefit? Sure. It's that they gain this Iron Suns keyword unless they're an ally, uh, and then they're going to get that minus one to hit. You also get uh, right fight of D D Duck Bad, um, yeah. which is in the first battle round, you generate additional command point. Um, your command ability, you, you get to choose. So um, if you are using this command ability at the, at the end of the enemy charge phase, that's an interesting um, mm. area to activate. Uh, pick one friendly friendly. Uh, Iron Suns unit within 12 of the enemy or wholly within 18 of the hero, uh, that unit can attempt to charge. So there's a nice little counter charge. Uh, Gammy smiling, going, yeah, wow, wow, we are. This is, this is cool. <laughs> there's the brutal but cunning coming out. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, you've got the artifact. So you are forced to choose an artifact. Uh, so if you only have one artifact, it is claimed by um, the Sun Blessed Armor, which is worse than the Ren characteristic of the bearer um, by one. So yeah. it makes it makes it um, you, you save better. Yeah, look, you're really locked with this um, with this artifact, and, and also the trait as well. Uh, your first mythic boss has to have that, um, and yeah, that, that's the only downfall to it. But uh, I think the trade off is definitely worth it if you gear your, your army towards playing game style. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so so if, if you if you're going to go this route, you don't really like the artifact, you might want to find yourself a battalion so you can choose an artifact that you really like. Yeah, yeah sure, exactly. Why'd you stop going blood tooths? Uh, honestly, they're just the immediate benefits from Iron Suns um, and the counter attack ability I love. Um, but, but just subtract one uh, from turn one uh, to hit is amazing. That, that's huge. Is there any reasons that somebody would want to go down a blood tooths route? Um, I mean, I, I think if you, yeah, God. I mean, you, you can be a bit cheeky with it. Uh, the Quick Duff Amulet is quite awesome. It's an artifact that you can give to a uh, Blood Tooth Mega Boss. Uh, you're essentially getting a green Hand of Gork spell for free uh, from a Mega Boss. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Plus, you've got the ability of adding one to the run and charge roll of Blood Tooth units. Yeah, um, that's you would... too, yeah. I, I was talking to an Iron Jaws player uh, before, and I think the challenge, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the sucky thing, at least, is the command trait is based off a realm gate. So, assuming there is a bale uh, for realm gate, um, they would able to be add plus two um, to the roll uh, to determine the Iron Jaws wag. But right. uh, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, games where the the war scroll of a bale uh, sorry bale wind uh, a realm gate is being played. So, uh, unless your community is playing with realm gates, uh, you're probably losing out on that command trait. You don't, and for us existing Blood Tooth players, the Tekken actually gave you the wrong gate, so it was yeah. no issue. Uh, now you've got to have it included, and uh, it's just, well, that makes it more expensive, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's a bit sad. Um, yeah. And thoughts on the chop, the chopper? Is that something that... Uh, yeah. So you get 100%. to... Reroll charges uh, if they're within 12 inches of a terrain piece um, or partially within enemy territory. They're going to get an artifact called the Mega Skull Staff, which allows them, uh, what's that, the bearer is treated to have a Mega Boss keyword for the purposes of the WAG. Uh, yeah. And two to the bravery characteristics of a friendly chopper within 18 of the general. And then the command ability is uh, friendly uh, uh, chopper, uh, choppers, war chanters. Um, pick three different friendly brutes or odd boys. Um, okay, some interesting stuff there. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, if, if if I was uh, going to resubmit a list for Runax next weekend, um, I, I would change from Iron Suns to this because uh, I think this suits my existing play style a lot more. Um, I've been used to the old blood two screenshot two bravery uh, to to my units. Uh, it used to be board wide. This one's within an eighteen inch bubble. Um, but the plus two bravery on average bravery six, seven units is fantastic, um, especially if you're running them in an MSU style. Um, and that reroll charge within uh, 12 inches of a terrain feature, I mean, wholly sure, but partially within an enemy territory, uh, when you're placing a terrain at the start of the game, just make that happen. And then look at the buffs you're going to have for the whole game. You're, in and you're charging. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, and then I actually think one of the biggest strengths to this list is uh, the buff of use war chanters, uh, which is Rebel Rouser. Um, instead of uh, adding plus one damage to a single unit, pick three units per chanter and then add the plus one damage to them. So I, I'm looking at an entire Iron Fist filled out with five units and my boss on a crusher between two uh, chanters becoming uh, plus one damage for every single unit. Every time. And then you add on some additional benefits and you can get things like, you know, you can get odd boys up to like a plus four to their charge. Um, you know, when you start combining with other abilities or, you know, things like musicians. So um, yeah. when you start, when you start looking at that synergy, all of a sudden like a, a plus four to the charge. Yeah. And then you, then you stack it with uh, like a get them beat, for example, from a, a war chance, so you access an 18 charge plus four with rules. Why not? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of play here with the, with the choppers. They're, they're a new addition that we haven't seen before, and they're very welcome. I, I love the look of them. Yeah. Um, while we're talking, Brogan, while we're talking Iron Jaws, we might as well uh, round this out and talk about command traits, artifacts, the mount traits. Um, so you've got six command traits. Now, that's assuming that you don't go down uh, the, one of those three sub allegiances. But if I was going to ignore that, um, is there any command traits that stand out for you between, so you've got uh, hulking muscle bound brutes, you've got live to fight, British cunning, uh, ironclad, uh, bestial charisma, and then the mighty wag. Any of those stand out for you? Yeah, uh, 
I, I'm torn with this one, and it really depends on what sort of style list you want to uh, want to run, what your mega boss actually is, what his job is in the army. Uh, the job initially for this war boss I've created is to be a complete beat stick, so I'm giving him ironclad just to give him plus one save, so he goes to a two up with fifteen wounds. Um, I, I'm liking that in combination with uh, killing models and getting extra wounds, extra attacks, and I think that should be enough to keep him durable. Um, there's some combinations with that and how you uh, tool up uh, his mount as well that can make him more survivable. Uh, but I, I just think, I don't think you need to stack more damage uh, with the other abilities. He's quite good as he is. And I think just making him survival is going to make that piece around for longer. And I think that's very important. Yeah. Uh, if you were going to take a uh, a weird knob, um, you've got three different command traits that sit under the weird knob. You've got dead cunning, you've got master of weird, and then you've got bursting off uh, with power. Um, yep. Whether it's giving you additional command points, uh, pluses to cast, unbind, and dispelling, uh, or uh, an additional spell from the spell law, any of those stand out for you from the uh, the weird knobs? Yeah. Look. Um... If I may segue into uh, weird trinkets as well, I've got a little bit of a combination going um, with how I'd run one. Is that all right, mate? Mate, you, you are the guest. You, you control me. <laughs> Thank you, good sir. Look, I, uh, the only um, purpose I've ever had for Shard on my list is a fungoid, and uh, the main um, uh, benefit to him was to generate CP for a very CP-thirsty army. So I'd be looking at that army, the start of each battle round, receiving D3 additional command points. I then would stack that with my artifact of power being the great green visions. At the start of a uh, hero phase on a four plus, I get another one. So what we're looking at is between two to four free command points every turn per piece. So that's pretty good. Yeah, ouch. So Gammy, Gammy, yeah. Gammy mentioned that, you know, Iron Jaws is more of a, a hungry CP army than the Bone Splitters. So there's a great example of how you can get additional command points now that we're restricted to only one purchase of additional CP on top of the battalion. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, to round things out, you've also got additional artifacts and you've got trinkets. So the uh, the 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 boss, the, the da, da boss, uh, he has a horde and you've got choices like uh, armor of uh, Gork, you've got the destroyer, you've got dabbling of Mork, golden tooth, metal rippers, claw and bone skewer. Any of those stand out for you? Um, and if they don't, that's fine. Obviously, you you know, we, we are restricted to artifacts in sometimes. Yeah, look, um, I, I'm quite restricted uh, with the Iron Suns list I've got at the moment. Uh, but when I was building uh, the Choppers list, I wasn't. Uh, so I was just having a bit of a play around that with the idea of him just being a big beat stick. Uh, things like Destroyer stand out to me. Uh, so just choosing a, a melee weapon. So, for example, I'm just going to go the uh, two-inch range spear with uh, damage two. Uh, I can make that damage three. Uh, with the destroyer, which I think is awesome when you can combine it with the potentially damage through a healing uh, crusher. Uh, on top of that, you can also buff uh, his spirit again with a chanter, uh, so you can just really get that damage uh, building up there. We're, we're talking about that number 60 before. This is how you start doing it. Yeah. And, and on the flip side, I think the metal, the claw, uh, being yeah. a Ren 3 weapon is scary as hell. Yeah, that's awesome as well. It's at uh, this section, and uh, I'm so torn over it. There's really good options. It just depends what you want your character to do. I mean, uh, there's some overlooked things in there. Uh, like I was running MSU, MSU Brutes for a while. Something as simple as the boss skewer uh, is fantastic. Just adding one bravery to units within 18 inches and subtract, subtracting one from enemy units as well. That's great. Uh, the golden tooth units wholly within 12 inches, but that can be a bit tricky, but if you get it, they ignore battle shock. That just keeps those super expensive guys around for so much longer. So in, in my cities of Sigma, I'm actually running something that's equivalent to the Golden Tooth. Um, yeah. Not taking battle shock uh, with Holy within twelve um, can be can be quite powerful. And you know, again, it's, you're saving a CP uh, should you require battle shock. So um, it's yeah, another it's way to keep you're not spending it. It's an amazing ability. Um, I just I just find it hard to be within that twelve inches because um, it's holy within. Yeah. Um, just depends if you if you want to tool your army to do that or not. The, the, uh, the thing that um, used to make the boss you are um, maybe a little bit more accessible is the fact that it was a iron jaws artifact. Now it's restricted to the metal only. So 
I mean, there's a lot of choices in there already. Do you want to give that to your boss? Mm. Yeah, especially if you're going to sub allegiance as well, where you're not going to get uh, a choice unless you have a battalion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, from a weird trinkets point of view, you've got three choices here. You've got your great green visions, which uh, allows you to get a command point on a full plus. Uh, you've got your uh, amber bone horde, which gives you plus one to the attack characteristics and plus one to the save roll. And then you've got your skull cape, which uh, adds plus one to the casting roll. And if a wi enemy wizard is slain uh, by attacks from the bearer, you get to know one of their spells. That's kind of cool. Uh, very situational, yeah. but very cool. Yeah, I mean, even more situational than you think. It's got to be done by his melee weapons. So, yeah. I mean, how often is that going to happen? It can happen, but oof. That, that's a lot of planets aligning. Yeah. So, do, do any of those stand out for you, or do you think that uh, you'd probably just go down to the Mega Boss route um, with that trinket? I do like the idea of the Mega Boss with the trinket. Uh, adding one to casting rolls is always going to be good. Uh, I do like the, the great green visions as well. Just more CP for that CP thirsty list. Yeah. So every, every, every hero phase or every, uh, your hero phase on a four plus, you get the command point. So you're essentially getting the fungoid cave shaman benefit. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you're not, you're not locked to the, uh, cave shaman or the words of profit. Man, you get so many cool stuff. You've also got a mount trait and then you've got the war beat. So your mount traits, you've got okay. six choices for mount traits. So your more crusher can get some good stuff. Uh, yeah. You can either add plus one to the wound characteristic, two inches to their move. You get plus one damage uh, to the Mighty Fists, plus one to Destructive Bulk, uh, a once per battle ability where you can subtract one to the hit rolls made within uh, within three of the enemy. Uh, and uh, on a four plus, you ignore spells. Yeah. Um, spells and endless spells. Um, any mount traits you think are stronger than others? Uh, weird and... I love for the survivability, um, especially if you're to something like a, an Iron Suns, uh, where you have to take uh, the, the artifact, which is minus one wound. Um, that, that's great, but mortal wounds are still going to take him off the table. A lot of the time, mortal wounds at range are going to be done by spells, so this is a nice way to stop that. Uh, my, my personal favourite is Meenan, though. I love adding that one damage to the Mighty Fist and Tail. Just makes him hit like a freight train. Because he's at the start, he's eight attacks with that. And you can make him top hit three. Uh, sorry, two up to hit, two up to wound. Uh, wound two, chemistry one. The plus one wound characteristics or the plus two, the charge. Uh, so two, two inches to the move is also uh, a very attractive offering. They're all solid. Yeah. That's tough. Poor game is like us. I would love some of these. Yeah, it'd be great. I love them. <laughs> I'd love some of those. We'll get to the split as soon. We'll get to yeah, the well, customization and sexiness. I'm listening to the terrible artifacts right now, so that's fine. Uh, you got some better stuff. <laughs> uh, war Channer has the war beat. So, um, so each War Channer in the army gets one of the three. Uh, you've got the, the get them beat, the fix and beat, and the killer beat. Um, so either you, you can just tell me which ones are the good ones. Some of these are quite long. Yeah, look, the get them beat's awesome. It's more, it's more access to big charge with the team. So start of your charge phase one model that knows the war beat uh, on a four plus pick a friendly iron jaws unit within 12 of the war chanter in that phase you attempt to charge with that unit if it's within 18 of the enemy instead of 12 roll 3d6 uh, instead of 2d6 when making that charge. Yeah and we're talking before about stacking that with choppers that's awesome. Yeah 3d6 charge is huge. Yeah exactly love that one. I do like the killer beat as well um so it's another four plus to go off. You add one to hit rolls for melee weapons for the target unit. That's excellent as well. And finally, finally, enough about the Iron Jaws, but finally, no, I, I <laughs> uh, you got your spell law. So you have yep. a choice of six spells. So um, you've got the Brain Burster, you've got the Mighty Ed Butt, you've got the Blazing Eyes, the Great Green, uh, so the Dark Green, <laughs> Great big green hand of gork uh <laughs> yeah. bash them lads and then the wrath of gork so uh if i'm if i'm choosing a spell law and i know spells aren't that important to you uh but of the spell choices are there ones that stand out a little bit more than others yeah there's a lot that tempts me into using magic um uh, i'm gonna pick two i'm gonna go uh brutal but cunning with my choices i start with brutal i'll go bash them lads 
Uh, casting value eight, successfully cast. I add one to wound, wound rolls for a friendly Iron Jaws unit, Hollywood in 16. There's not a lot in the game that buffs uh, wound rolls. So any chance you get, I think you should take that. That's awesome. Yep, agreed with that. Yep. Uh, for the cannon side of things, it's got to be the great big hand of Gork. Uh, being able to uh, roll a seven plus, pick a friendly unit within 24 inches of the caster and then three inches away so they can't be locked in combat. Uh, you get to place them uh, anywhere on the board more than nine inches from animal unit, so you've essentially granted them a teleport. Um, I love that. Um, pick a place that's weak on the battlefield, somewhere that needs attention. Maybe it's a, an objective that needs to be sat on. Just gives your army some um, practical flexibility uh, that I think it needs at times. And yeah, I, I love that. It's a nice surprise, sneaky attack. Great for late game objective grabbing, to be honest. I, I did a lot with the gits. Uh, very, very cool spell. Yeah, yeah. Like immediately, I see people use it for that big alpha strike, and I, yeah, I think alpha strikes are hit and miss. Uh, but that late game versatility to grab those objectives, I think that's where it definitely finds its value. Yeah, I, I, I found that um, when I would talk through my Gits army, everyone would ask me, "Do you have that teleport spell?" And um, the psychology behind it was fascinating because a lot of people would would always keep an unbind up their sleeve just in case I tried it to cast the hand of Gork. And I never did it in during, you know, turn one to three. It was always a three to five kind of, depending on the situation, going for the objective. Um, but, but during turn one, turn two, turn three, they'd often let me cast my endless spells. They'd let me cast my damage dealing spells because they were always concerned that I would teleport. Um, so even just having it in your arsenal um, can force your opponent to play differently, I found, at least, um, when I was playing with Gits. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I come from a Stormcast uh, background and just being able to teleport and the flexibility is huge, um, especially if you run like a, like a Hunter's style list um, and you've got a Lord Aquila that can bounce you around the table. That's awesome. Keeps people guessing the whole time. Uh, one of my regular opponents, uh, Lachlan, that I was uh, <laughs> forced to fight in uh, round four at Sydney GT. He played. Who's, also your, who's also your brother? He's all, look, yeah, we'll throw that out there as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he uh, he always keeps me guessing because he's got the from the Underworlds rule, which is essentially the same as the Stormcast teleport ability, and you just don't know where they're going to go, and it forces you to play a lot more cagey game and. I don't think everyone wants to play a cagey game or they're just instantly so much more uncomfortable because of it. Yeah, you find opponents leave uh, leave units and models trying to screen uh, that they, they might not have normally tried to screen um, if you didn't have the teleport. So a uh, good one to have up your sleeve. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, a lot of cool spell laws, a lot of cool choices. Iron Jaws, hashtag blessed. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, I love it. I'm so happy with it. Oh, I'm glad. If you're happy, I'm happy. Uh, if you beat me again at CanCon, I will not be happy again. Uh, I'm sorry. There's going to be tears then. That's all right. I'll be. I'll be. Uh, nah, three people uh, will be all right this time. This time, I'll have more more than one week practice with my new Gits book, uh, which is what happened with CanCon. Uh, beats uh, my two game practice. <laughs> yeah, a bit more practice, a bit kick my ass. Um, Gammy. Help yeah. me get, steer away from uh, Brogan and let's talk splitters. So, yeah, um, you have what? You do you have some sub allegiance? Yeah, we do. We got three. So we got the Bone Grins, we've got the Ice Bone, and we got the Drakfoot. Now, now, I hear I hear a lot about the Drakfoot. You do. Is That's the it, uh, it's it's the internet's fire storm. It was great. I love it. Is it as good as the internet claims? Or uh, I've heard other people like Seth Cook over in New Zealand say that it's good, but it isn't the best. Yeah, it's definitely not the best out of the three. Um, I think the, it's that kind of trap that everyone sees the first time they read it and they go, oh, my God, it ignores, you know, after saves. That's, that's an ethereal. It's it's kind of the go-to. Um, I'm actually running Drakfoot next week at Runak, so it's um, more for a matchup type thing situation i think it's really solid if you come up against your daughters of cane your fire slayers your nurgle anything that has a damage prevention role um people kind of yeah i think it, it was that initial oh it's a gatekeeper army sort of thing and i i said it myself i, I think it's it's good i don't think it's going to be the go-to though yeah and, and like you know i know a lot of people who have seen the cities of sigma book uh immediately think hello heart and yep. you know they're running around getting 30 phoenix guard 
um, those cheesy players getting 30 Phoenix Guard in their arms, especially <laughs> those bandwagoners. Who would, bandwagoners do, that? Who but, would know, do that? Who would do that? Who are those filthy, <laughs> filthy who merchants? Would, who would take the entire of all of Australia's stock and buy it out? Who would <laughs> I'm going to yeah. in the chat. <laughs> good Lord. Um, but, like, one of the reasons Phoenix Guard is so good is they've got the four up after save. Yep. And, uh, you know, Nighthorn, you know, we had a lot of problems last year with Grimgast Reapers and, you know, a lot of things ignoring, um, those, you know, the, the, those those additional saves. Mm. Um, and I, I know the Drakenfoot uh, was was everyone's like oh, this is my this is the answer to the after save and um, we can ignore a lot of that stuff which um, which could be really good if you're playing in like an ethereal meta you've got vampire lords on zombie dragons with the ethereal amulet yeah it's um for me it's well see with the ethereal amulet they've actually FAQ'd that to say that it doesn't that so we don't ignore that one anymore. So mm. um, and they also FAQ'd uh, Marathi. So originally people were kind of saying three wounds uh, is it an ability or is it something that you know um, Drakfoot overrules? And they FAQ'd that to say no, she only takes her three. I actually think it's it's fair to do that because if you had ninety Arab boys going to uh, or yeah. ninety Arab boys shots, sorry, going to Marathi, it'll take her out quite easily if she couldn't have her three yeah. wounds max sort of thing. So you um but yeah. do you ignore uh Gotrex Gotrex abilities yes. as well? Yeah. Yeah. So Gotrex yeah. ability, uh, his after save he doesn't get. Um and because oh. his ability is you reduce the damage to one and all of our stuff is damage one anyway. So it's yeah. um yeah, it, it's pretty solid. I mean I killed Gotrek with 30 Arab boys um a few weeks ago anyway before the new book came out so uh he, it's just weighted dice sort of thing but yeah so um we can talk about Drakfoot first they're they're the third one along um the reason why they're good is because of the dpr ignore they're good against bone splitters because bone splitters won't get their six up war paint safe so it's mm. um an interesting one for the mirror match they, they could kill them a bit quicker um the thing that kind of is interesting about them is their command ability uh, which I think I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I think it's quite strong. Is uh, you pick a friendly unit, Drakfoot unit within ten, uh, sorry, within eighteen, um, wholly within eighteen of ten or more models, and um, a friendly Drakfoot, Wogog Prophet, or War Doc can do this, and you can attempt to unbind a spell, um, or uh, yeah, so you can unbind a spell, and then you add one to unbinding if it has 20 or more models. So it's kind of like an extended unbind. I kind mm. of like it, but I haven't really had much of a chance to use it. So for me, it's an interesting one. That's why it's kind of, I think what the standout for Drakfoot is, is actually just their initial abilities, which is strength of purpose. So ignoring the um, after effects. So because uh, their command traits, pretty cool, actually quite, kind of like this, is uh, all the wizards in Drakfoot can cast Fireball. Um, yeah, I was, just, I was is, just looking at Fireball, and that is yeah. an awesome, that is yeah. very cool. It's very cool, because it's just, it's kind of, if you're looking at units that you want to get rid of, um, it's a better Arcane Bolt, because it's um, a casting value of five, and so if it's a one model, it takes a mortal wound, two to nine suffers D3, ten or more suffers D6 mortal wounds, and at a casting value of five, that's really solid, at 18 Super inches cheap. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just an extra little spell you can throw in if um, if you feel like casting it. And with the Wurgog Prophet, because he can cast two spells, it's a nice little bonus to have him um, shooting a fireball out. Uh, and then the last thing, which is kind of the weakest part of the whole thing, is the Artifact of Power. Um, so if you successfully negate a wound or a mortal wound um, with your War Paint save in combat, uh, the, the enemy suffers a, a mortal wound back in return. So, this. Yeah. Drak Drakfoot reminds me of uh, almost makes me feel like this was available twelve months ago when Grimgast Reapers and Daughters of Cain Hagnar were absolutely wrecking face, and they have all those after saves. Mm. I feel like this would have been perfect twelve yep. to eighteen months ago. Now, uh, still absolutely. good, but not yep. as good as Rewind when you couldn't un you Hagnar was just just destroying the meta. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is for next weekend, um, I'll be saying to the team captain, if the Daughters of Cain army comes up, I'm happy to to play it with Drakfoot because they won't be getting their Hagnar re-rollable after save. So they, they just go to really basic sort of, of models. Night, and, and Nighthawk, Death, Phoenix yep. Guard. Yep. So many things yep. with an after save. You're just like, meh. 
Correct, yeah. And it's one of those things that, you know, you see that weight of dice that bone splitters have um, really does affect. And it, it is a really nice bonus. Um, playing Dave with the Big War yesterday, he got the uh, built up enough Big War points to be able to get the six up after save and he couldn't use it because I had Drakfoot. So it is that sort of little, you can see it, it, it has its bonus, but um, I'm already looking at, at changing. It's funny, um, you were talking earlier before with the recording saying that you're looking at wish you could change your list for, for Runax and then Brogan's literally said the same thing about 10 minutes ago. I think I'd change back to Icebone War Clans for myself <laughs> if we had a chance to, to resubmit. But I, 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 was, I, was pr I was praying the FAQ would mess up my army. I could tell Gabe that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that, oh, say, I'm going to change oh, man, my list. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, so if Drakfoot is not the strongest of the three, which one is Gammy? Uh, in my mind, uh, it's actually a really tough one between Bone Grinds and Ice Bone. Um, and I'll talk about both only in their strengths and weaknesses because I think it's a, a really interesting. Bone Grind, uh, Grin, sorry, was the one that everyone looked over straight away. Everyone just went, it's not great. It, it's okay. Um, look at Drakfoot, look at Ice Bone. That's the internet blew up over, over those two. Um, but now that you've got more time to play around with it, Bone in the sense that they play. So when you've got that five-inch move at the start of the game, you can kind of reposition if you've got an MSU army because you round up with the amount of units. So it's half a units, get the, the five-inch move, and you round up doing that. These guys have their ability. It's kind of cool. The Bone Grins are kind of um, – they're the masters of getting in people's head, and they rile you up, and they, they know exactly what to say, so they kind of trigger you so that you, you have to charge them sort of thing. So their ability is called Bring It On. Um, so they actually use like amber tipped weapons so that people rage out and they, they lose control. And the purpose is behind that is so if enemy units within 12 of any uh, friendly bone, bone guards unit at the start of their charge phase must attempt to charge. And they must make a charge move if it's possible for them to do so. So even if they roll, you know, 12 inches and they go, oh, well, you know, I don't have to. It says you have to make that move. So it is a really great disruptor there. And then on top of that, in addition, any enemy unit within three of a friendly bone grinds unit cannot retreat. So when you're looking at Slanesh with their ability to retreat and charge, looking at um, Sisters of Slaughter with their ability to re retreat and charge, they, they cannot do that because they're, they're so enraged. So this one for me is a fantastic ability. It's, Could um, be interesting to bait. Unit. Is it like I think about my army and I've got a bunch of shooting units. You know, you could bait me to come into combat, which is where I do not want them. Um, and if, if the meta is as true as it is, that shooting is coming back, it's back already, um, and you can get some of those uh, really fast units within 12 of mm. uh, a shooting army, um, real damage. Yeah, man, and it's one of those things where you think about like 10 pigs. If you manage to get the double with Breath of Gork, they're moving 36 inches up the backboard and most people with their heroes uh, sitting yeah. in that backboard, if I haven't charged you and I've managed to reposition there, those heroes then have to make a, a charge. So they're, they're coming out into, you know, like you're looking at with Gits or, or Daughters yeah. of Cain, five wound models. And yeah, it's a, it's a really nice bonus, that one. Yeah, that is cool. That is cool. Um, so, and on top of that, I really like their command ability as well, which is feel the spirit, man. It's pretty cool. Um, so you pick a unit wholly within 18 of your friendly bone grind savage big boss. And until the end of that phase, so this is at the start of the combat phase, any six scores two extra hits. So, or sorry, scores two hits on the target instead of one. So he's got his ability in his war scroll, which is called something different. And then he's got this one. So if you've got two command points, you can make... Uh, every six, three hits. So it's it's an ability there. And then if you've got the Maniac Weird Knob near there, put it on a unit, they've then got four hits as a, as a success every time it's a six. So it's um, it's really solid. Um, I quite like that one for, for a command ability. It's good. What about Ice Bone? So that was that was our bone, what, what should be, used to be called Bone Grinder, but it's... it's yeah, yeah, it should be called Bone Grinder. within 12 minerals kind of meant so they kind of focus around the idea of a big boss being a general um which i know yeah. a few people have spoken about the idea of if you don't take a big boss general then you can take another command trait and it's a bit of a weird one there it's one where i'm kind of i was waiting for the faq to come out and say no no you have to take part of it is do you know what i mean like it's a, it's a yeah. tough one with because i'll talk about it with the ice bone because they talk about the idea of your ice bone maniac weird knob general 
And so I'm going to take an ice bone maniac weird knob. But if he's not my general, does that mean that I get a command trait from the excellent command traits that are in the book? And so that's one where I'm kind of. Surely, uh, I mean, this sounds like a gray area for a TO, but mm, surely, mm. surely first glance is, uh, I mean, do you not meet the eligibility? Or is it something that you just lose? Um, exactly. You just don't so, get yeah, it? Yeah, you don't get the command traits, then you get another command trait, like the generic no, ones. It's, it's no, I'd, a say tough just, one. I'd say you just don't get it altogether. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's one that I. the more I listen to people talk about it and say, like, it's a loophole, I'm not sure if that's intentional or if they're, yeah, I, it's a bit of a tough one for me. Um, but, yeah, so you've got, this is why I like Icebone. I think Icebone for me uh it's with the, this is the toss up here. So they're if, if they've got an unmodified roll of a six for a wound made with an ice bone unit, um, you improve the rend characteristic of that attack by one. So this is gives us rend because uh, you know you've got bone splitters notorious for not having rend. So if you look at ninety arrow boy, boy shots going in, um, they're generating extra attacks. So you've got more of a chance of getting modified sixes or unmodified sixes to make it a rend ability, and they already have. Uh, aim for the eyes is their little ability as well. So if they're fighting a monster and shoot at it with arrows, you've got neg one. So on top of that, that then becomes neg two um, range, which is a, a really nice bonus. You're looking then at um, the likes of a keeper of secrets at neg two to save, and even um, any uh, you know dragons from feck and that sort of stuff. So I really like that ability. By the way, the chat is telling me that uh, this may have been clarified in the uh, designer commentary, uh, okay. and I'm and I'm being told that uh, you can choose any trait or artifact. So I'm just getting yeah, a validation okay. now. But it yeah. sounds like that. Uh, don't look in the FAQ. Look in the design, designer commentary, and yep. we may found the answer between what that might look like. Yeah, cool. There you go. All right. Well, that's Happy days. Pretty nice. I like it. I like it. So um, as, long so as, as, long, as, long, as long as my, my, my homie is correct and the, and the design yeah. of the commentary is, is accurate, look, I'm that's, sure that's our is. stance. Yeah. Yep. And that's really cool because there are some great command traits and, and artifacts as well. Uh, All right. Here's, here's, here's the there. wording. Some Iron Jaws and Bone Splitter War Clan rules state that the general is a specific model, uh, i.e. Iron Sun Megaboss. They must take a command trait or artifact of power listed in that War Clan. But if the general is not a, a model specified, uh, can I pick a different command trait or artifact? And the answer was yes. So, there you go. Uh, cool. According Very to cool. the designer commentary, we are choosing whatever we want. Yeah, and that's why I think, so based on that now, I think like Drakfoot is the weakest because they've, which is cool, really solid command traits, which I'll talk about. And their artifact pair is not fantastic either, which is the, the burning sum. Um, all right, so the command trait or command ability, sorry for ice bone, is really cool. This is uh, Ian Spink apparently used this really well um, on uh, a stream a couple of weeks ago, so or last weekend, sorry. And it is the command ability, so at the end of the combat phase, if you do so, pick one friendly ice bone ball boys unit that's within three of an enemy unit and wholly within 18 of a friendly ice bone hero, that ice bone ball boys unit can retreat. In addition, until your next charge phase, subtract two from the charge rolls for enemy units that are within three of the ice bone unit before they retreated. So it's, they freeze them and then retreat, um, which is really good for some late game objective grabbers as well. It's really solid. Because if you've got hand of gork on them as well, they can retreat 24 inches, which is pretty solid. <laughs> so it's just And with fly, so they just disappear, which is um, it's really nice. It's a nice one. Um, the command trait for if you take an ice bone maniac weird knob is that you get plus two to your move for the general, um, and you get one uh, plus one to hit and wound for the model's war bore. Not fantastic, but pretty cool if you've got a 14 inch move wizard for some objective grabbers for, um, you know, like your orb or something like that if you want to go with that. And then finally, the artifact power is you add one to the bravery characteristics of friendly icebone units while they're in holy, holy within 18 of the bearer, which Bone splitters, they suffer with bravery, so I think it's not a bad one. That's why I think Ice Bones kind of stands out for me. So you can see Bone Grins, you've got a cool ability to play with your opponent's movement phase and, and kind of force them to come towards you if you've got units in the backfield. Uh, Ice Bone has more uh, all-rounder sort of stuff there, so I quite like the rend ability. Even on big stabbers, give them an extra bit of rend on a roll of a six to wound. It's pretty solid. So, yeah. Awesome. So we also have the customization and spell lore, I'm assuming. I'm just scrolling through my book. We do, yeah. So if you go the Bone Splitter's Command Traits, this is one that I wanted to look at because now that that has cleared up for me with the Command Traits, there's one that I really want to point out that I think is out of control for it. Um, 
which is after the allegiance abilities if you if you're trying yeah. to chase that yeah go for um, it yeah. so you've got the great hunter so if your general is part of your army uh when you use the tireless trackers trait at the beginning of the game it's units move eight instead of five um an extra three inches doesn't sound like a lot so i've heard um but it is fantastic i really like it as a move eight inches really gets you closer I found with this ability, it does make people consider taking first turn. Um, and sometimes people don't want the first turn. They want to try and get that double. And you know their game plan is, I want to move and get a double turn. If I've thrown up a chaff wall eight inches in front of your opponent, um, I can still buff them up and make them uh, move up and do some pretty solid damage as well. So I really like that. Um, I think it's a standout for me. Any other ones to call out? Um, the other one I like is in the shamanistic quirk. So if you take a wizard as your hero, um, what I like about the Bone Splitters command trait is that they give it to the Wurgle Prophet or Savage Bo Big Boss because the idea is that you follow Prophets around. That's the fluff behind it. So I think they've really thought about that as a nice bonus because then they can also, the Prophet is um, capable of taking the shamanistic quirks. And the one that I like is the Fueled by Spirits. So, you know, an extra spell from the lore of Savage that one extra spelling uh, which is pretty solid so you know it's for him he can take two of the law spells which is great um because there are some standout spells there yeah we're... which we'll obviously get to very very shortly but additional yeah, spells not a um thing. yeah it's it's solid particularly for bone splitters i think they're and again it plays into their um their lore in the sense that they follow all the shamans around and get buffed by them and, and hope for the best, which is pretty cool. So if we go to the artifacts, the artifacts for me aren't super good. Um, the one I think to stand out used to be a command trait is glowing tattoos, which is uh, you would negate uh, your war paints of four plus instead of a six. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I become Phoenix Temple, which is pretty cool with that one guy. Um, but again, I, like our heroes aren't super tanky anyway, and they're not... Um, you know, like negating some extra wounds is nice, but there's, I think out of the, the whole thing, that's probably the best one because the other ones are about increasing your damage characteristic of weapons and, you know, we're not we're not wanting to be in combat with those guys. So, yeah, that's why I kind of looked over that one. And look, to be honest with you, one of the next questions I'm going to ask both of you to come back with is, are there, are there artifacts in Malign Sorcery that um, would be better suited? So if the Bone Splitter artifacts, and, and that's not right now, but... Um, yeah, yeah. If the bone splitter artifacts aren't that good, then let's yep. look in Malign Sorcery to, to bridge that gap um, to, to find what we need. So yep. um, that's fair. It sounds like this, and I look at this, and it's all right. Like there's a healing, there's a yep. healing artifact. You know, as yep. you said, you can increase the, the four up, um, add plus one attack characteristics. There's some interesting stuff, but yep. um, as Chaos, Chaos Spawn said, uh, we need a rogue idol that's a hero. So he yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, if Cities of Sigma can have a Steam Tank hero, surely there's yeah. a hero. Surely we could have a rogue, hero rogue idol somewhere in, in the cool. mortal realms. Don't, don't I reckon you can make some pretty cool fluff for that one as well. It'd be pretty Hashtag sick. that ruined my hobby. It's a hero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hero of the people. We haven't uh, owned a hero on Pig before we get that. That'd be rad. Oh, I would have liked a Demi Griff uh, hero as well. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send my shopping list against Workshop to uh, ask them where my stuff is. Yeah, yeah um, where, where is it? <laughs> uh, Bone Splitter Wizards, anything uh, from, from, from their artifact pool that you would call out, whether it's the big walk, uh, the mask, the, the bony bits, uh, or the paint? Yeah, man, I reckon the wire paint's pretty good as well. So that one... Um is at the start of the hero phase you roll on the spell law um, and it's randomly determined but that one you can cast so if you've already cast that spell then you can cast it again um, so they allow you to break that rule of one ability for that one so i think that's really solid because the spell law uh, is really solid apart from two spells um, which are good but they're not really you wouldn't really see them taken a lot so that one for me i think is a bit of a standout the old Wurgog Mask was one that was really popular. Um, I used yeah. to take it all the time, um, which used to be, you know, you'd either do one mortal wound or you'd do 26 before dying. Um, it was a bit of a random, random determined one, whereas this one's a bit more, uh, you roll three dice and on a two plus you inflict D3 mortal wounds. Um, so you do that every turn instead of uh, once per game, um, which I think is really solid. And if you roll a one, you suffer D3 mortal wounds. I think it's better than what it used to be. Um, but there are people out there who argue it. So I think it's a pretty solid one there. 
finally we have the spell law and yeah, you man. have six spells to we choose do. from and as you've said there's a good chance you're choosing more than one spell where we're taking that trait so you've got the squiggly curse you've got the breath of gorkamorka please don't uh please don't try to cast that in real life near me <laughs> sounds like some yeah. rpg weird stuff some like you weird, bad breath to yourself yeah yeah, yeah exactly you've got brutal spirit uh brutal beast spirit uh bone crusher a cunning beast spirit and then gorkamorka's war cry uh, yeah. So which ones stand out? Um, so for me, the ones that don't stand out, because that's how I'll, I'll kind of sell it, is Squiggly Curse and Bone Crusher. Uh, okay. Squiggly Curse used to be a hero and monster snipe, so it used to be 24 inches. It's now only if you're within three, you suffer three, D3 more yeah. wounds. Yeah, and, and then D6 if it's a hero. Um, yeah, if – oh, sorry, if it was a double, sorry, it's D6 more wounds instead of D3. So that was one thing I liked about the Bone Splitters lore in the old book was that if you rolled a double, you get bonuses. They kept that, so I was really, really happy that they did that because um, for me it was kind of their little bit of – bit of charm that I liked about them. The other one that I'm not super fan of is Bone Crusher. Um, so it's basically – the closer you are, the more mortal wounds that you do. Um, as I said, with your heroes, you don't really want to be throwing them up into the front lines apart from the big boss if you take him, so, and he can't take these spells. So, yeah, that's why those two don't stand out. Um, the one that is the biggest winner from the previous book is Gorkum Walker's War Cry for me. That one you used to have to... And be out there. My Wagal Prophet, who was Bravery 8, was already behind on that dice roll. And then what you would do is... You do D3 mortal wounds, and then they are always strike last, basically. So they strike last in the combat. Um, that's what it used to be. Now it is that you just suffer those D3 mortal wounds automatically, and then you are to fight last in the combat phase. Um, yeah. And it specifically says in the next combat phase, so it doesn't carry over into if you get the double turn or if they double turn you. Um, so that doesn't carry over. But, yeah, I really like that one. Um, for me, it's it's a big change. Casts on a seven, but um, there are a lot of ways to buff those casts in um, the synergies in the book. The other one that changed was we used to have Hand of Gork. They've changed it to Breath of Gork and Walker. I was actually expecting a, a teleport, um, and for me, I'm really happy they didn't um, do a teleport because I find the double move and fly or triple move and fly way more intimidating for opponents than a teleport. I think teleport you guys mentioned before as a – great mind game because people kind of say oh when's he going to do it um i think this has the same effect people kind of hold out they they let me do all my other spells and then you get breath of gork and then if you're lucky you you roll it on a double six and then you watch them cry a little bit inside when your pigs are flying 36 inches across the table or your rogue idols moving 30 across the table so yeah and and, and obviously the, one of the great benefits as well is with a teleport or any teleport you know you can screen someone out with a not within a, within a nine inch you know there's always a restriction yep. but your re only restriction is the three inches three from inch. being in combat yep. so it yep. gives you a whole uh, while you don't have the distance of the board yep. you have a lot more flexibility of claiming yes. an objective or getting in something sexier and um getting into combat as opposed to going for that nine inch charge yeah yeah without the shenanigans of exactly yeah and it's it's that almost you're sitting there hoping to roll the nine if you don't have a hero nearby as well so it does play that sort of uh, what happens if this doesn't happen a three is more likely to happen well that's that's why i mentioned that when i did hand of gork with my gits it was a turn three or or beyond because yep. um I can't do it in turn five because the likelihood of charging a nine inch is slim to mm. none at mm. least turn four, I've got the chance of, and I did this against Wes, is I failed the, yep. I failed the charge, but then the turn after, I could then move and increase my, yep. my, um, yep. So my you chances. Closer, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't have to worry about that. You could literally do yep. that and be within three. So, uh, sorry, yep. outside of three. So, yeah, yeah. And it's for me the the big change from that is it used to be unlimited range. So um, the old hand of gork, it was just yeah, it was crazy. So um, now it is wholly within twenty four, but that's massive. I. Every time I go to – it was my biggest learning curve for this army so far has been the wholly within ranges. Um, and for me, that's – it. wholly within 24 is excellent because Brutal Beast Spirits is now wholly within 24. It used to be within 18. Um, and you get plus one to hit. If you roll a double, you pick another unit, um, which is fantastic. For Bone Splitters, as I said, everything's hitting on fours. Getting Hitting on threes is way more reliable. Um, and I, I quite like that one. And you can do that on Arrow Boys as well, so it's not just in combat for that one. Uh, cool. Quick question. 
if mm. I went down the big wag route, do I get a spell law? Do I get this stuff or am I trading off the combination to be a big wag? Yeah, um, I think the because with big wag you can still pick from the spell law. So if you've got bone splitters wizards, they can still pick from this law. If you've got iron jaws wizards, they can pick from the law of the weird. Um, so yeah, big wag for me. Is so it's such a good allegiance ability. Um, the difference gotcha. is, is you, and then you can also take those um, artifacts as well if you like. So if you want to give it to, you know, get the extra spells on these wizards, then you can do it as well. So, so I, actually, there's no downside to taking big wag, which is terrible. But, but I don't get the I don't get the Iron Jaws allegiance. I don't get the Bone Spurs allegiance. Yes, but I can choose yeah. the spells and the artifacts and the traits. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so you still get access to Always Strikes Last with Gork and Walker's Warcry. You get access to Hand of Gork. Um, you, you know, yeah, it's pretty solid. It, it's a really nice bonus, the big one. Hell, if Australia's best player back-to-back -back master Dave Kerr is running them, uh, you know there's something in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know there's something and, in there. Yeah. Yeah, and then again, solid. he's been running. He's been running uh, Darkling Coven, so Darkling either Coven. that's a charity event, or he he knows there's some secret tech in there. So yeah, we we've said he's been in the hyperbolic time chamber for the last nine months. He's been just in a hundred times Earth gravity, just training up. He's he's swimming. He's slimming up. He's sweating a sweating up a storm. Now he's got the big wag. He's he's gonna go. He's go practicing well our stance wag. Yeah. Yeah. I did mention I bring you boys back together to talk artifacts. Is there yep. artifacts within Malign Sorcery that if you weren't going to choose something from the book stands out? Is it, uh, you know, the traditional ethereal amulet, sort of judgment, you know, um, Aether Court's brooch, or is there anything that you think that might stand out? Brogan, I might go to you first. Um, poor Gammy's been talking for a good 20-odd minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, give him, give him a small break. That's, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's definitely uh, some useful artifacts out there. It just depends on whether you can um, actually take them, depending on what war plan you're in, because um, a lot of that's just predetermined. So, like your, your first war boss, for example, or your first mega boss, for example, has to take an artifact. Uh, you start running out of characters uh, that can take them, and you also run out of artifact slots. But if you do find yourself in a position where you can take them, uh, some of the classics are still fantastic. Uh, so Ethereal Amulet, for example, on top of a um, uh, Mega Bros on more crushes can be great. And it's going to be a, a three-up save uh, that's now unrendable. Um, you can find easily find ways to reroll ones on that. Um, that that's a lot with 15 wounds. That's going to be good. Uh, Aether Quartz Brooch uh, for a, uh, a CP Thirsty list, once again, always going to be good. Uh, so yeah. I think you're going to see a few of those out there. Um Sword of Destruction you mentioned before. I mean that that war boss now with a streamlined profile um, because it buffs a single weapon strike. Um, put it on an eight attack uh, minimum spear and just watch it go off a few times. It's going to give them uh, the ability now to do some uh, mortal wounds, which uh, that's probably the only thing you really couldn't do. So there's definitely options in there uh, for survivability. Again, uh, I mean, I'd look at Realm of Shadows for things like an Orgu Blade for minus one to hit. Uh, Griff Feather Charm from Realm of Beast to do that even better. Same thing, but you get plus one move. So I think there's definitely quite a few options out there. Um, Ignax Scales from uh, Realm of Fire, why not? Four up save against mortals. Um, if they manage to get through your, your two up save, if you've got Ironclad, there's, just, there's, there's a lot of potential. Yeah. Gabby, anything that you would call out that stands out? Nah, man, I think Broga's nailed it on the head there. He's, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there's lots of interesting builds, but um, yeah, some of them have better artifacts than others. I think the challenge here is getting those artifacts. And I think uh, being an army that may not rely on the battalions as much as, let's say, a Sylvaneth, for example, uh, you may find that you only, only got one um, artifact. But uh, play around with it, see what's going on. Uh, there's some cool artifacts either in your own book or in Malign Sorcery to choose from. Um, no doubt. And, and Brogan, you've picked out the, some of the best. Um, yeah, endless I mean, spell. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? They're, they're hard to ignore. They're, a lot of those become auto includes. They're there for a reason. Yep. Um, endless spells. Um, is there any endless spells that is worth looking into? I know some builds probably aren't relying on magic. Uh, does that mean that we're going to put on the Maelstrom, for example, to kind of suck up some endless spells or... Um, do we think things like cogs can be beneficial to increase that that um, that movement or? Um... Yeah, cogs. I 
don't think you need it. I think there's enough buffs. It almost becomes redundant. I, I had it in the list for a while, and it's, it's too much. <laughs> I mean, you've got things like this, this the bridge, the um, the, the soul screen bridge that can kind of, or, or even the Uber driver, you know, Lockie, the Uber driver can pick up a nice big block of 30 and move them around the board. Um, yeah. Cammy, you're nodding a bit. Do you see any? Yeah, any... I, th I think the thing is we've got those spells. Like, yeah, uh, we've got Breath of Gorka Morka that does the same thing as as a bridge. We've got the, um, you know, the you've got the springy, the bringy dingy, you know, he's... He, same sort of thing. Like we've got to teleport, we've got to double move and fly. I think, really, the only endless spells that would stand out for me are your gloom spite ones, the ones where you're affecting your opponent a bit more. Um, I think yeah. Geminids has a place. Um, Geminids always kind of has a place in a lot of armies. Um, if you're running a wizard heavy army, which basically out of the six characters I run in my list, uh, five of them are wizards, so it's not a bad shout to if you've got the points to put in a. Uh, Races of swords because they're 30 points and you come up a lot against a lot of chaos so it's not bad having some mortal wound output and endless spells are great for throwing in if you've got the spiders for a blocker or if you've got the moon for preventing other people from from casting i think they're a good shout for that yeah um i i think of some other spells maybe some ones like palisade or or shackles or um uh, or scuttle tide if you're taking that gloom spite um, wizard as well because I guess for some of you you want to either funnel or you want to block line mm -hmm. of sight um, you want to kind of bring people into the battle certain way so by putting up a wall of some description you know palisade blocks line of sight which could be very cool at the same time shackles um, could really m mess up certain certain parts of the board and I think I think what I'm hearing as well is we need to go down the cheap route um, yep. Do you see something like Emerald Life Swarm being worthwhile as well, bringing back or healing up certain models? I don't mind it in Iron Jaws. Um, Bone Splitters, uh, there's not really that many wounds in the sense we got a lot of two wound models, um, whereas Iron Jaws, if you're running Brute Heavy, you've got a bit more there to play around with with the heal. Um, so I don't think it's a bad shout. Yeah. It's not too bad, but uh, like you said before, I mean, we kind of already have it. You can do that a bit with the War Channers. I mean, it depends on what on what beat you want to play, but yeah, it, it is already sort of covered. Yeah, that's a good point because the war docs have their dances as well, where they heal and they can, yeah. they can stack that one. So, I think the challenge is the point sink, right? Like, you're not a yeah. magic heavy uh, army if you're going to put a bunch of endless spells. Um, is it really worth it? I would definitely probably look at the Maelstrom. The uh, that the yeah. ten points allows you to you know um, try to unbind a spell and obviously it creates a little bomb um, at a certain amount of points um yeah something that's yeah. cheap and cheap and nasty you've got the extra points but at the same time if i've got a couple of spare points do i go for the triumph and mm -hmm. um you know getting an additional benefit from a triumph might be a better investment in my army as opposed to a 10 point 20 point endless spell mm -hmm. something to consider yeah yeah absolutely i was gonna ask I'm, I'm a little unaware of this one but can you still get the vortex i know that's Gone from the store. Is that still a, a viable? Bellwind, Bellwind Vortex. Yeah, Bellwind. Yeah, yeah. It's dropped yep. off the Australian store for some reason. I don't know where it's disappeared to. Um, but it's but yeah, available. Still get it. Yeah, still get the yeah. points for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I still think that could be useful on a We Nod Shaman. Maybe get some play on uh, your casters as well. Yeah, man. The Wergo Prophet with his uh, his spell and his um, uh, what do you call it in the War Scrolls? Fantastic. So if he gets a Wound for every four plus to every model in the unit within 18. And so if you extend that by six, it's pretty solid. So you got 24 inches. It's a good shout. And that's only yeah. 40 points. That's only 40 points. It's a quite a cheap, endless spell. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, looking at that on a, a weird Bob Shaman with some of the uh, like character sniping, mortal wound, yep. wound dealing spells like Mighty Adbot. I mean, if you can add the extra range and uh, target a wizard with a wizard with your wizard, uh, you can do D6 mortal wounds to them. That's mm. pretty good. Mm. Someone in the so, uh, Lewis in the chat's called out um, the eighth, uh, the eighth avoid pendulum also could trigger a mad as hell uh, yeah. on a bunch of things. So it's a nice yeah. little shout. Yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> so there's definitely like, you know, while we're rubbishing and particular endless spells, it's not to say that um, you can't build around it and build strategies around it. Um, Absolutely. But I think yeah. we kind of call that early that magic isn't a dominant part of this particular army. So, 
um, I guess where you allocate your points is always going to be the challenge because we always want more piggies, more bodies, uh, yep. more more of everything. But where where do you where do you get it yep. from? Always want more. Yeah, that's it. And it's there's so many choices at this stage, and there's a lot that's quite new and turned the uh, the existing miniatures on their head. And you know who knows where that's going to be in the next few months. There might be a new matter that develops from it, and armies will look totally different from what we're seeing. Looks good now. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and, and look, and, you know, if you want to go down the cogs route, you know, you get double casting. The, the only benefit that I see cogs, though, I know, um, I know you've got a lot of movement in in your army, but there was that um, that sub allegiance that allowed you on a four plus to bring a, a unit back on the board from the side. Um, yes. If you had cogs, maybe that would make it easier to then kind of come from the side and then charge in and try to claim an objective. That could be worthwhile, but that's also an expensive if. You know, we're relying on a unit to be destroyed. We're then going to get a full plus, and so you're, yeah, you're talking about hard fist, and it actually, that's not too much of a risk because they've already got um, plus uh, three to charge. Yeah, they have got plus three to charge, so that's that's okay. actually a pretty good combo you got going there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe Cogs comes back from those. Other What's that? So that makes it a plus five, does it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they've got a not? plus three already. Plus the plus the Cogs is plus five. Um, yeah. You know, in the in the early game, you would um, slow down time to get the yep, additional get spell, an spell, and yep. then as you start moving into this strategy, you apply the plus two, make it a far, uh, turn a nine inch charge into a four inch charge. Um, yeah. <laughs> the chances of failing yeah, is slim I mean, to none. I mean, stack blood two so on top of that for that natural plus one charge again. So what plus six um, our boys that have died come back and then born back in your face. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and Lewis has also called out. He's like, um, you know, you could put on a a, a weird nod shaman, cast up the bale wind, then um, use the hand of Gork to teleport him around the board because the bale wind acts uh, as a part of the model. Uh, we know that bale wind you can't move, but you can set up. Or am I losing the plot? That sounds about right. I think we better watch out for this guy in the chat. Uh, uh, he's, 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 he's got some. I like it. Yeah. Well, I'll make, get him on the show next. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I think that's a, a good exploration of endless spells. Lots we could choose from. Lots of things you could build around. Obviously, there were some bravery bombs, and you might want to cast an endless spell that you know de increases the, the debuffs to bravery even more. Um, lots of different options. Yeah, definitely. Well, you have two gammies. Now we have one. I've got a jewel. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, I mean, sneaky. Cool. So we've, we've talked there. endless spells. Not, never can have too many gammies. <laughs> That's some Gork and Mork fusion, man. <laughs> that was yeah, the, the split it. of Gork and Mork. Um, <laughs> that's it. Lord. Um, so we're kind of wrapping up, and I want to talk about advanced tactics and advice that you would give yep. a new player or someone who maybe is doing okay and they want to get even better. So. Yep. Gammy, I'll ask you first. Um, what's what advice would you give to me as a uh, brand new orc bone splitter, iron jaws, great, whatever, whatever I want to play? What advice would you give me to to start off my journey as a uh, uh, an orc player? Yeah, man. Um, I think the way to do it is start with something that you, you really find as a core um, in your army. So we were talking before about the idea of thirty uh, thirty boys. Um, with spears and shields or it could be rogue idol if you want or it could be ten brutes like something where you go I know that this is going to be my reliable it, it, For orcs they really need something reliable hero phase for us is super important So the war docs the war chances the spells everything to kind of get your buffs and your synergies going super important um, It's about kind of managing that phase as well. I find um, particularly if you're doing big war or even Iron Jaws, where you're saying, okay, well, if I want to damage myself to get an extra D6 move, how am I going to do that effectively without losing out on points or losing out on extra bonuses there? Bone Splitters, it's kind of that idea of get into the habit of doing your dances first with your War Docs, then play around with your spells, because one of the War Docs dances is to plus one to cast. So you want to, you know, if you're getting plus one to save on something, great. If you want to heal, get that going as well. Um, it's about kind of knowing your hero phase then knowing your movement. I think um, when it comes down to 
combat and shooting, it's one of those basics of the games that you can get used to. But for positional play for Orcs, I think that's to, to kind of get your head around. That's for all three allegiances. I think bone splitters don't get too excited by the five inch move um, at the start of the game. I, I kind of, my first game, I just pushed everything up. I was like, yeah, this is the best thing ever. Um, and you see it with Iron Jaws players. They go, all right, let's, let's do CP. So I move up 14 and then you go, oh, I didn't do all my buffs. Hang on a sec. I've got a, you know, like if you've got your more crush, you want to fly up the table, make sure you've got the buffs before doing that. Yesterday with my um, rogue idol, I forgot to war chanter him. So I flew him up 20 inches into his into Dave's lines and I sat there and went, oh, I didn't do a war chanter buff. He was gracious enough to say, nope, that's fine, do it. And I said, no, no, I'm practicing. So my war chanter kind of stood there shaking his, his little maracas around and just buffed himself instead for the rest of the game, made himself damage too. So, you know, it's just little stuff, trying to get your head around a lot of the mind like the little minor sort of things to think about so you've got your dances you've got your war channel buffs you've got everything so that would be my biggest advice that's a lot of practice um makes perfect with orcs um don't get frustrated with them and they they lose their first three or four games um i think a lot of people tend to it's like when you start any new army don't don't give up if you're losing it's it's um make some changes if you need the army is quite diverse in a sense. Like I'm, I'm already looking at a big wag for my next thing, and bone splitters is my love. But I, I definitely want to try out the big wag as well because, yeah, they're they're a good winner in this game. So, Oregon. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on that last point about like sticking with an army. I think that's really important. Um, I, I usually aim for an army a year, uh, which is quite a popular thing these days. Um, but just playing it out and getting them in practice is the first thing you should think about um, when you can get to um, that, that notion as well as like, yeah, you can make some changes. If you go down that path, make your changes subtle and make them slow. Um, really get accustomed yeah. to what you're doing with your list before you just keep changing it. Otherwise, you might as well just be playing a different army or a different faction every time. Yeah. Yeah. Great call. Great call. I, I joked about... Um that uh, I lost a game against the big wag or the iron jaws the other day. And I've gone out and flipped my, uh, my free guild into Phoenix guard, but I've been f playing free guild. <laughs> I played free guild nonstop for two years and I played the empire for, yeah, for 15 yeah. odd years. So I, I know, I know how they work, but yes, uh, just because yeah. you lost a game or something didn't work once doesn't mean you should throw the baby out with the bath water. Um, exactly. Make one you change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you've invested into the pantaloons now as well, so that's. Kind of I, do, I do, I do, I do own pantaloons. <laughs> I do own two two pairs of pantaloons, uh, yeah. but I'll save that for the Cities of Sigmar video. Um, <laughs> my recommendation, and I'm going to start calling this out moving forward, is there's an amazing website out there. I'm not sponsored by them, but I think they're worth calling out. Called AOS Reminders, they put all your rules together in in like a uh, a couple of pages, but it's broken up by uh, by your phase. So, um, you know, Gammy talked a lot about the heavy hero phase. So you could see all the different um, uh, war scrolls and the different rules in the different phase. And I'll even order it by the start of the game, uh, sorry, start of the start of the, 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 the phase, mid or end. So um, as you're learning about your, um, your threat ranges, you're learning about which buffs what and at what time, um, you're trying to put all these war scrolls together, it's a very handy asset and it's free so i would highly yeah, recommend cool. if you're starting or even just trying to get quick um it's a very 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 cool um uh, asset yeah definitely it's good shit. so I, I would call that out especially if i was brand new because um yeah. or even I'm, I'm yeah anyway you get the point <laughs> um <laughs> um what what other experience or advice or things that you've learned so far that you think is worth sharing um about this so you've given me some good tips but I want to. I want to go. I want to go four and one, five and zero. Oh. I want to. I want to kick serious ass. How do I do it? <laughs> so this is touching back. Go on for it, Brogan. You started. Thing, one up. Yeah. <laughs> um, trial and error. Work out what works for you. Work out your play style. Work out the miniatures that are going to go into that, and then just keep practicing. Um, I think we've mentioned some really good combos that we've got in here. Um, it's just about doing the research and then trying them out for yourself and then keep trying, keep trying, and then start to nail it and just get confident with it. Yeah. Yeah. Practice, yeah, practice, I think, practice. Yeah, practice is key. And the, the thing that I find is starting to happen, 
a little bit is that idea of people finding a list online and, you know, like saying, okay, well, this is working, so I want to give it a go. And if it doesn't work, then they tend to drop it or whatever it is. I think it's that sort of thing of know your army well enough. I know the units in, but if the pigs don't work in one game, it was probably because I'd put them into a bad matchup. If I move something out of position, it's kind of reflect on your own play style. And like Brogan said, get, so if you want to go four and one, you you got to know what the armies are going to be like in the top table and kind of have some units to deal with that. So it might be 30 Arab boys to deal with the Keeper of Secrets or um, at Toowoomba GT I played in the last game, I played nine Storm Fiends and 40 Plague Monks. And the deal with 40 Plague Monks is that they will just murderize you in combat. So Cunning Ruck, shoot them off. Then I'm dealing with the, the nine Storm Fiends where, you know, throwing big stabbers into them, throwing pigs into them. Don't be afraid if you lose units. I think that's kind of a big thing is if you lose that favorite unit, have a backup plan to it. Um, you know, the Rogue Idol for me is I've got my list based around that, but then I've also got my other units that I can buff up as well. So my War Chanter, I'm even looking at putting in 10 um, Auric Brutes at the moment because the War Chanter at the end of the day just sits there and goes, I'm going to buff myself. If he the uh, Rogue Idol, throw that up, and then for 280 points have 10 Brutes sitting on a an objective and he can buff them as well then yeah it's a really good good shout out there so you know don't make sweeping changes to your list which is what brogan said and i think that's you know it all comes down to practice to go go hard at the tournament and yeah those top top team you know you're going to come up against slanesh i don't i don't know the answer to slanesh sorry i don't think anyone does at the moment do, do you think a cunning rock um is going to help yeah, definitely. Um, I I just think the problem is is that you kill the Keeper of Secrets and then they bring it back. There's no yeah. way to instantly remove a Keeper of Secrets, which stops them from getting depravity. So I'm, I think it's tapping their depravity is a really tough one for, for Bone Splitters um, and for Iron Jaws because we have so many wounds and, and we do lose out on that. So. And, 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 that, and that's, that was really interesting because I played a Slanish uh, army with my Gits recently and you know, 99% yeah. of my army is one wound models. So um, you can really reduce the impacts of the depravity, but because your army is so elite and you've got minimum two wounds, um, you are you are a, a battle. Actually, in fact, Brogan was it? No, I, I can't remember who it was, but at a recent tournament that I had run, Sydney GT, um, it was a two and a half thousand point um, uh, tournament. But Slanesh generated off off the back of an Iron Jaws opponent, one hundred and sixty six depravity points. So yeah, that, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for rehashing that nightmare. Well, you didn't Ooh. have to own it. You didn't have to own it. But the point is, is that you, you, you got to plan for it. If Slanesh is heavy yeah. in the meta, how do you handle that? Uh, if that's the type of yeah. player that you're trying to go for, and yeah. um, maybe you do need to ally a bunch of gr uh, grots in just to uh, screen yeah. off, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. And and that's the thing is, it's a it's a tough one. I think. You know, no matter what you do, you're going to come up against bad matchups. And that's anyone will say that. And that's kind of know your bad matchups, play the objectives, play the mission, do your best. And, you know, I used to get frustrated with these guys because I'd be playing, you know, like two hours of solid Warhammer, trying my best. And then it'd just come down to like Toowoomba GT. It was turn four. I was feeling good. I was up by two points in um, one of the burning objectives missions. Then he rolled a 12 on his bell and summoned a Vermin Lord Warps here that just jumped in and killed all my stuff and won the game for him. And I went, ah. it's like, I don't have any abilities like that. So it's kind of, you know, dealing with your losses and, and, and learning from those is really important with this army. And, and there will be losses, I guarantee. Probably not yeah. in big ones, but there will be losses. Yeah. And you don't have any special terrain, terrain. You don't have any special endless spells. So yeah. get good get good at what you got. Correct, correct. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Brogan, anything else you would add uh, off the back of that? Look, um, I'm just sort of listening to the advice and a lot of it's actually just real generic, like Warhammer 101. You know, like, uh, I think something that I've really learned with the Iron Jaws is learning their capabilities. I mean, you, you can really invest into high damage output, high movement, and just getting started. In, but does that mean you should like, really learn when to do that? when to call your plays and once again that's going to come from practice but uh, there's a lot of things that just look real tempting uh make sure your your opponent's not going to take advantage by you getting stuck out of position yeah yeah and, and my advice you know my my math hammer advice or at least i've played against iron jaws and bone splitters many many times uh my advice would be 
just because you can doesn't mean you should. So um, just because you can move six inches in a in an opponent's hero phase because something happened uh, doesn't mean you should move the full six. So uh, this army is not about moving forward and charging ASAP. While that is incentivized, you need to pick your battles. You need to think about yep. uh, maximizing. And I think what you guys have called out about the damage potential, knowing which fights to pick because you start activating that WAG and uh, you're rewarded through smashing and bashing and you're rewarded by uh, destroying units. So if you can um, if you can start knowing what it can do and the likelihood, um, you're just going to have that title. And, and, you know, I played against Brogan at CanCon and I've played a whole bunch of people and the, the ones who do really well are the ones who who set, it, set up that WAG and it's just this rolling tide that the momentum shifts and it's tough. Mm. It's very tough to fight back. Yeah, it's definitely less less through WAR uh, these days um, and a lot more just through that raw damage potential and smashing yeah. and But yeah, yeah, pick that moment. Sorry, when I say WAG, I mean the general just got uh, oh, yeah. or wah, as opposed to an actual <laughs> ability. Um, Laying the beat down. Although I do remember um, uh, a fine gentleman in uh, in Victoria, Ben uh, Zagami, I think he's called. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure your army does better if you actually yell WAG uh, at tournaments. I'm <laughs> pretty, pretty sure that's a fact. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, man. Very well, man. Is there any other, any other, uh, we are approaching the three hour mark. Uh, I'm conscious of time and I'm, and you guys have dropped a lot of knowledge bombs on here. Um, is there anything else you'd want to add to, to this discussion? Uh, or should we start wrapping things up? Oh, One thing to add. Um, yeah. I, I, honestly, uh, this is an old hat for me, but I'll definitely put on a hobby developer hat with this one. Um, I like to remember that uh, Warhammer is a lot about the miniatures. So when it comes to your selections, pick some cool minis. You've got to do the hobby. You've got to do the painting unless you're getting the whole thing done by a commission painter. But uh, uh, do it yourself and just enjoy the process because that's 90% of the time. Enjoy it. Yeah, and, and that's something that I normally shout out early on in the faction focus, and I think I forgot this time. And this is obviously about a hobby. Have fun. Pick whatever you want to pick do what you want to do we're obviously talking here at a very competitive level someone that wants to do well at a tournament but if you are absolutely in love with a particular you want to run an army full of um, big stabbers and just have three battle line do it it's your hobby yeah. do whatever you want run run three rogue idols if you want um but we're, we're talking here a bit more competitive so though so yes 100 yeah. percent. do do what you want to do I'll get cool. anyway. <laughs> that's it <laughs> Um, uh, by the way, uh, after this show finishes recording, I'm going to have two lists from uh, both Gammy and Brogan who are going to be in the comment section. So if you are watching this on replay, you can see two of the examples of their lists. Um, we'll probably spend another three hours talking about particular lists <laughs> they have, but I'm conscious of time. So if they want to talk to you guys and they want to know more about your your weird secrets of, you know, dancing for Gork and Morka or being cunning or being brutal... Gammy, are you on the internet at all? Where can people find you uh, and talk uh, Auric goodness? Yeah, man. So I'm on Twitter under M underscore Gammy. Um, so nice, simple name. Um, and I do lots of updates actually lately of how bone splitters are going in, in the current meta. So I've been trying to do a lot of games and get some practice in. Been posting a lot about that. Also on the bone splitters page as well and the Auric Warclans page. So there's... Uh, on Facebook, those those groups have been taking off in the last couple of weeks. I can't keep up with all the updates. Every time there's, you know, you jump on after a long day of work and there's about 400 people put something up. So it's uh, taken off. But if you do want to talk talk anything there, um, I've actually just got a Twitter notification instantly then. So it could there be um, something. But, yeah, so... I'll take, I'll take a commission kind of off you. Thing. I'll take a commission off all your new followers. Yeah, and, yeah it'll uh, be 30 cents, 30 cents per follower. It's fine. <laughs> cool. I'll, ta I'll take it up your next weekend. Yeah, I don't know if they're paying me. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll put Gammy's uh, Twitter handle in the comment section as well. Um, Brogan, are you on the interwebs at all? Yeah, mate, just uh, just hit me up on Facebook. Um, I'm undecided as to what I'm doing with the old Instagram, uh, and there might be some uh, goodies coming out from our uh, gaming club as well in the future. Um, but, yeah, just for now, Facebook's fine. Um, I try my best to contribute um, on the Sydney AOS page and the Australian AOS page. 
Um, yeah, they're probably the best places to find it. Awesome, Theron. Uh, cool. This has been an awesome discussion. I appreciate all of the feedback, all the insights and uh, the persistence as well, especially I know we've had some technical challenges uh, on this stream. <laughs> Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like it. If you've got comments or thoughts around lists that are working for you, I'd love them in the comment section. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, what's wrong with you? Um, subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, Gammy, Brogan, you guys have been absolute legends. I can't wait to shoot you off the board with my handgunners uh, and then uh, stand there <laughs> with my uh, four up Phoenix Temple uh, ward save, except if you run Drakfoot in case I am going to Drakfoot, avoid you like the plague. It. Exactly. Ignore it. Don't do that to exactly. Me. All right. Before we go, can I just do a shout out to my boys in the Mango Mafia and my boy, the Doctor from the Northern Chapter. He's coming back to Brisbane. I'm so excited. And my boy Wes as well, who's been watching this three hours and he's been loving it as well, which is awesome. Yeah, you've had a lot of shade being thrown at you. Uh, I'm sure yeah. I have. <laughs> Doctor, De Doctor Death Tim McDivitt's actually even offered yep. your phone number and street address recently. So. Awesome. Uh, if you'd like, if you'd like to know where Matt lives and uh, <laughs> and, and come to his sex dungeon, uh, hit up yep. Tim McDivitt. Um, yeah, currently in it right now. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're off track, guys. Enjoy yep. the rest of your week. Thanks very much, and uh, may the big wag scream wag. I yep. don't think I went through. <laughs> All right, see you guys. See ya.